Hey everybody, uh, welcome to the Cloaks of Mindhelm, 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons stream from Penny Dragon Games. Uh, I'm Ben, your DM. Uh, we've taken you on a dive into the lives of the most overworked City Watch officers in all the known realms, the Brown Cloaks. Uh, if you're new to the stream, you can catch up on the story so far on Penny Dragon Games' YouTube channel. But um, it's not just Cloaks, you know, that we stream on there. We've got tons and tons of shows every week. I think we're up to total seven i think seven campaigns or maybe seven or eight shows if we count ryan's a uh, penny for your thoughts sort of talk show um so on tuesdays which is a uh dm juan has fellowship of the fallen and so from last week in the house of thalavar there were some spooky goings on a ghost a possession and some star spawn manglers which are a great monster by the way uh, all were defeated but are they truly gone I mean, you can never tell D&D. &D. You know, nothing's ever really dead if the DM decides that it isn't. Uh, then um, next Friday, uh, DM Dave is back with the Sofran Saga and the party have travelled to Braytok, Braytok's Grove. Sorry, I probably butchered my Irish there. <laughs> Travel to Braytok's Grove to help him with his giant problem. Uh, not a giant problem, a giant problem. Yeah, if they survive, Breatok has hinted that he may tell them the locations of the other rune stones. Then on next Sunday, um, Violet Madness is back, dear Mark's game. So as the party trudged through the swampy mire, they swiftly realized that they were not alone. After learning of a much bigger threat in the bog, they elect to take the Duke in their company to safety. Easier said than done. We've all been there, you know. Who hasn't who hasn't escorted a duke through the swamp? and found it was a lot harder than you thought it was going to be. Uh, on alternate Fridays, um, so same same weekend that we run Cloaks, uh, Richard runs the Churn Gang. So uh, I play that as well, actually, um, and so does Nico. So uh, we're going to be back on... Um, well, I've got... Hang on, I've got my dates wrong now. Um, we'll be back in two... It'll be two weeks, Friday. Um, but... Um, I, could, I know exactly what happened this time because I was just there. Um, we have gone to uh, the party is facing Baba Blackbird or Baba Blackbeak, rather the um, the uh, Corvid uh, hag who has been stealing royal, well not royal, stealing noble uh, babies and replacing them with her own children. Uh, you know her own little her her minions. Uh, yeah, and then after that we've got to go, got to go kill some gods. You know, it's, it's it's fine. It's 16th level party stuff, you know. <laughs> and then um, on Thursdays, uh, we have streams, but it's a little different. It's less regular. We've got a couple of games which run more kind of monthly. So um, we have uh, Icewind Dale, Rhyme of the Frost Maiden from DM Craig. So Rhyme is on a brief hiatus as Craig braves the frigid Canadian North on tour. Uh, but he'll be returning on September 1st for episode four, The Road to Bryn Shander. So in the meantime, watch it. What? Sorry, weird noise missing. Sorry. In the meantime, uh, you can watch the party meet for the first time and undergo their first adventure together by catching up on the first three episodes uh, right over on the Penny Dragon Games Twitch channel. And they should be going to YouTube fairly soon. And then also on some Thursdays, uh, we have Candlekeep Mysteries from DM Tom. Uh, a bit of a summer break for the party. Uh, as we're trapped in the extra planar manor in in uh, in Candlekeep, um, we they have uh, four of the seven puzzle books and the Furtunus. Oh my God, I can't speak. I haven't had enough sleep, folks. I tell you, it's been. <laughs> I was doing a charity stream last night, so I'm running on. I'm running on a half tank here. <laughs> but um, uh, I also keep switching between we and they when I'm talking about Candlekeep because uh, I'm also playing in that. <laughs> but. Uh, we're, uh, we're, we'll be back on the 25th of August to see if we can find the rest of the books that will let us escape from the interdimensional space we found ourselves trapped in. And hopefully we don't sit on any more chairs that turn out to be mimics. And last but not least, uh, on the channel and over on YouTube, uh, there is uh, Petty for Your Thoughts, which is run by Ryan. Uh, he does a great job hosting that. It's just our sort of every so often to fill in some gaps in the schedule or if Ryan's got the time we uh, run you know basically a talk show just discussing different topics about D&D &D and about the streams with chat and the VODs of Cloaks and all those other shows um, you can catch up with them on, on YouTube 
Uh, and then also in Penny Dragon Games um, land, we've got our merch store for the Twitch streams, um, where there's some really cool stuff on there, including art of characters from Fellowship of the Fallen and um, others from DM Richard, who runs the Churn Gang, who is also a very talented artist. And mm -hmm. lastly, uh, Penny Dragon Games Book of Beasts, um, which is a hardcover D and D supplement with over 200, close to 300. Um, beast stat blocks for druid wild shapes, familiars, animal companions, things to throw at your. Just if you want to like a big bag of weasels to just throw at your party, then it's got everything you need. You know, it's just a big bag of animals to uh, to really mess with them. Uh, that is live with pre-orders. The Kickstarter campaign was uh, a couple months ago, um, and there's as well as all that. There's beast themed magic items uh, and twelve beast themed subclasses um which is pretty one of which uh one or two written by our very own kyle um and one from me two yeah the sorcerer and the um god there's so many hi, hi. oh hey <laughs> i think i only wrote one if i remember correctly i just wrote all the beasts <laughs> yes well yeah Ky yes kyle wrote hundreds of beasts for the book so Please, Kyle, you know, <laughs> let's, let's get some ordered for Kyle, you know, <laughs> for, for that mammoth effort, if you'll pardon the pun. Um, <laughs> so for tonight, I just want to say finally, thanks to Kate from at It's a Map on Instagram and Twitter for tonight's fantastic tabletop map. It's, it's amazing. Map. It's a map. It's a map. <laughs> uh, and also the, uh, the man himself, Christian, I want to thank for his tech wizardry and the incredible overlays and intros. Um, I, it would just be me rambling up here like a lunatic without all the pretty stuff, you know, <laughs> to, to make make me look good that Christian does. Uh, and now, with all of that out of the way, um, if you'll forgive my rambling, I think we'll get to some introductions. Like I said, I'm Ben. Uh, I'll be DMing. And let's hear a little bit about the players. So first up on my screen is Fona. Uh, so hey, I'm Fona. I play Andy, who is the human rogue of the party. Uh, she's there she is on the screen. There, there she is. Um, I am on work release, I suppose, from prison to be in the grand 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 cloaks. Um, not exactly thrilled to be here, and currently grappling with whether to. Uh, whether the most expedient way to get myself out of here is to betray my friends. Mm -hmm. Oh, and, so and I have a ginger in... cat called Ember. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Vote, vote in favor of renaming um, renaming the organization the Brown Crowns. <laughs> I no, think first at the top of that list is that dog. He needs a new name. <laughs> yes, yes, Mr. Tibbles. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think it was Mr. Fibbles, which is even yeah. worse. Mr. Somehow. Fibbles. Yeah. They're both Mr. nonsense. Yeah. They're both nonsense words, but somehow Mr. Tibbles sounds more dignified. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is the yeah. name of a cat. But Mr. Mr. Fibbles is more sinister, though. Yeah. Definitely. Oh, God. I can't... I think this was, this was his name. Um, the, like, the Commonwealth Games were on TV here, and there was an Aussie... I'm not sure whether he was a long jumper or what it was, but his, uh, you know, his name... His surname was... It was like a double-barrel name, but it was, I think, Stubbledy Cook. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah wow it was something like that it sounded like you know toodaloo or something you'd be like i'm gonna start saying it to people now and be like all right stubbledy cook you know <laughs> as i leave um next that's like up, a pirate it does uh <laughs> next um kyle can you tell us a little bit about the man on screen here fantastic uh, character really... art by james austin by the way i will be playing our, our, uh, everyone's favorite resident mad wizard mr pouches um who is a lover of all things arcane maybe a little bit too much in some cases he enjoys magic and he enjoys magic too much in a society that doesn't like magic at all yeah magic is um magic is is practicable only under strict license in the world of um of Minehelm. So next, who have I got next? Um, Boyd. Let's throw. Let's... 
Hey, what's up, folks? Uh, uh, I am Boyd. Yes, that is my name. And I shall be playing <laughs> Dural Stonehill. He is our resident dwarf pugilist. And a pugilist is a subclass created by the great Benjamin Hoffman. It is very cool. Check it out on, is it drive through he's on or? Uh, it's on DM skill. And actually, DM's guild, um, yeah, not drive through. Okay. you can either get it like solo or recently with a bunch of other creators. He put out a book called the ultimate adventurers handbook, which is like, like a few hundred pages and it's got tons of subclasses. And so it, it collected all the pugilist stuff, and put it in there as well. Yeah. Um, he- it's a very cool class. So uh, Durl is a young naive dwarf who gets uncontrollably agitated when he crawls through dungeons. Um, he loves tales of old ad- adventure and parties, and he's obsessed with them like a nerdy teen loves Spider-Man. He likes to throw hands, and he swears a lot in a particularly dwarven fashion. So yeah, yeah. that would be Dur- Durl. Nice. Um, next, uh, Nico. Hello, uh, I am Nico. I play Patri, uh, the once charming, handsome, tall, luscious, uh, <laughs> elf <laughs> artificer. Scrumptious. What is he again? It's been a while. Yeah, he that's, that's a... right. He's an alchemist. Yeah, an artificer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. alchemist artificer. Right. Uh, <laughs> and after a few too many uh, experiments gone wrong, um, he's a little troublemaker. He is now a shriveled little. Uh, pathetic excuse of what he once was, but he is very charming still, and he will blow shit up just the same. Yeah. Oh, he's got he, a little buddy, um, and Watson. Here's, here's little buddy. <laughs> His little buddy Watson, who's a little flask flying around by him. His little snitch. Yeah, flask yeah snitch. Um, and which Pull I think, <laughs> Yeah, which I think leads us uh, at last to T. Hi, I'm T, and I'm playing Thana, a cleric who is quite morbid, but also very happy about most things. So it's quite an interesting one to play, and I'm yeah. looking forward to causing mayhem with the brown mm-hmm. crowds, apparently. <laughs> 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 right, we've got to get that petition up, you know. you got to hammer it to the front of the barracks, you know. Maybe people would react to us better. But like I said, yeah, there's some... This uh, character art is by uh, one James Austin. It's incredible. And it was commissioned very well spent. I absolutely love it. Um, So, with all that said and done, where we last left off, the brown cloaks had been sent on a mission to initially it was to run off some brigands or investigate some brigands that were hassling um, Camp Carbuncle as it is affectionately known uh, a refugee camp that sort of clings to the to the outer wall of the poorest part of Minehelm um, and as poor as the drains are, the, obviously the people in the camp are, are even more downtrodden um, and these people are being exploited but they don't pay taxes so no one the, the proper authorities who would be the green cloaks really didn't give much of a shit about it so it came up down on the brown cloaks to to sort it out after um, a skirmish there and doing some investigating party have found themselves or found their way rather uh, to the stronghold of these brigands which is in a ruined keep uh, in the middle of a a very dangerous swamp and things have gotten fairly hairy Um, they managed to sneak in uh, thus far undetected by the camp at large Um, they took some people out silently uh, partly with the aid of a mysterious sniper who is firing arrows from the trees. Um, I have no idea who they are or where they are in the tree line. But uh, just where we left off the last time, which was a very long time ago because we, we had to miss a couple sessions for, you know, life, uh, life reasons, the, the party were sort of kind of making their way closer into the, the center of the camp when a... Um, like a, one of the one of the higher ups, not not the highest up, but one of the you know lieutenants or whatever they might be. I don't know anything about ranks. They, uh, you know, discovered them. They got into a fight, so they've they've killed um, some of these dudes. And you can see we are all over here um, in a in a big heap with a bunch of corpses. So the alarm has not been raised yet. 
it was about to be raised, but um, the sniper took out the guy who was about to raise it. So where we are right now, uh, we have been infiltrating, and just before they did that, they saw the leaders of the, the uh, brigands uh, returning to the keep, and they have retired to the main building. Uh, they said they were calling um, uh, a council, you know, like a meeting. So here we are, and what does everybody want to do now? Am I still there? I am. Yeah, I. Yeah, your new tokens should be working. You should be able to see everything that you could see. If you can't, uh, let me know. I see. Me. All right, guys. What do we want to do? Where do we want to go? Can, can we see any enemies? Oh, shit. In sight or no? Um, not immediately. No, it, it's it seems to have gone gone quiet again. That little skirmish that you got into. Mm-hmm. I mean, in in D2, I think it was like one round. So I mean, realistically, it happened in the space of a few seconds. So I think before it was noticed, because there are also in the in the yard, you know, over the wall, that there are people training, people you know, sparring and people firing arrows. So there is a bit of. There's a bit of hustle and bustle around the camp. You know, this is not like everyone's bedded down for the night and any bit of noise is going to gonna carry, you know? Awesome. Okay, so how scalable would the walls be? Uh, I mean, depending on what section of it, how, whether there was a, you know, a foothold or not. I mean, a lot of them are, are crumbling, so it wouldn't be too difficult. The, the walls are about between 5 and 10 foot high, you know, in places they're usually good enough to cover all of you you know for the most part especially since some of the members of the party are a little more diminutive mm-hmm. okay <laughs> it's kind of came back to me i believe we were doing a uh, a look around the perimeter and kind of got sucked into this fight mm-hmm. oh, yeah, uh, well and right. andy wants to go into the barracks that is now cleared because we just killed the people who came oh, yeah. out of it mm-hmm. and, oh, and snoop, snoop around action. the beds yeah, so gonna gonna he's going to be snooping around, looking through the windows, seeing if he can see further into this place. You all sound so creepy right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to snoop around the beds. I'm going to snoop mm. around outside and look through the windows. <laughs> Murder. <laughs> so, so yeah, Andy's definitely investigating around all these beds, looking under them, lifting the sheets to see what's in between the sheets and all that kind of stuff. You might not want to do that. It might be totally um, horrific, but like that might be where people okay. hide their gold. So, yeah, in in yeah. that little, um, I suppose that half of the the barracks. Can you give me an investigation check? Because even you know with that that many beds, it's it's a lot. You know, take a a decent amount of time to to toss toss the beds, and there there are there are foot lockers um, at most of them. You know. Um, Dural like whispers in. We were doing that perimeter. Go No <laughs> Okay, where are you? So E, what was that a f- was that a That f- was seventeen plus? Oh nice. I'm gonna re- rejoin Dural and just be like there's a lot of people in their courtyard. A lot of people. <laughs> yeah. And dogs. Yeah. Let's just mm-hmm. check yeah. the whole place out without running in and getting into something we don't understand. Sorry, well, Ken my... and Watson can scope. He can get pretty high and stay hidden. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'll, he'll. I'll still need to get a just get a stealth check for him, just because you know. It was him who started this the, whole in thing the, in the open air part. Okay, you got a, a seventeen. Did you say? Yeah, um, Andy. Yeah. So uh, what I'll do is I will post it into the um the roll 20 chat because i closed my discord i think so i can't put it in there but um this is what you find and i will read it out for the folks at home so uh, basically collectively going through everyone's foot lockers and what they've got you know stashed underneath their um their pillows you know uh because most of the people you know it's like the foot lockers are largely fairly empty you know, with the exception of a couple of people have like maybe a spare pair of boots, uh, another knife, you know, maybe a cloak. But 
it's certainly what you would do, which is these guys probably keep a lot of their stuff on them. And then they've got like other things that are maybe, you know, really hidden that they're like stuffed in a mattress or, you know, they've got a little crack in the wall. So altogether, what these brigands, you've got um, a piece of azurite, uh, which is worth 10 gold pieces, um, a piece of moss agate, this kind of greeny striped stone, which is worth 25 gold pieces, and then a total in, you know, bits and bobs and coins of 56 gold, 190 silver, and 345 copper. And that is from... Uh, this half of the the room. <laughs> okay, so that's going to take me a while, I think, to to have searched all that. So I don't know what. Yeah, that will be. I mean, a few minutes at least. That's going to be. You know, I'll say. Uh, what have I got here? Um... But like, did any of y'all come in with me, or are ye scoping the outside? I'm kind of oh, like. I'm I'm kind of trying to decide what I want to do, but it depends on how messy you're leaving the barracks. Because I want, if it's really messy, I'm going to try and tidy up after you, so so it looks undisturbed. Mm-hmm. That that took Andy. Kind of went to in, looked through a window, and went back out. Yeah, that was sick. That's going to be six minutes of of rummaging. Oh my jeez! Like I, I mean, in terms of your because yeah, yeah. it's it's not just look. It was like she really went digging. I'm like a minute and a half into it, and I'm like, uh, I'm not standing here waiting to get scouted out. And I head down to here and try and like, I would have, I would have pushed myself close that, to the rocks and and be stealthy. Mm-hmm. The minute he said that, I, w- I would have been like, let's go take care of that body then. And I would have, you know, gesturing to this one down here that we can like push yeah. it off into the river or stash it in the bushes or something. Yeah, just yeah. So it's not I'll, seen. I'll do that. Yeah. Um. Where did you go? Carry in? Pardon me? Where did you go? I just went down, down here. The bottom on the bottom corner of the fort. This one. Oh, it's weird. It was. Uh, not seen at all. So, yeah. So you can. Um, yeah. Well, you just give me a stealth check, obviously, as you're just as you're moving. Sure. I'll, I'll take it for, you know, it'll be for the next few minutes anyway. Okay, 12. <laughs> and yeah, I, I, I'd... Uh, 12. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I'd point to the suggestion know. we attempt to move bodies like this one. Betw- yeah, I mean, certainly between this the two one, of you, although one. Doral would be well able to shift in the moon self. Um, in like the are... middle of lifting one, I'm like, have I got the fucking heavy in? Lift! <laughs> <laughs> Mage hand. <laughs> it can only hold yeah. 10 pounds. Eight pounds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, this is why you need unseen servant. <laughs> uh, the So, yeah, you... Um, yeah, I mean, I, now I, I will have to ask. I mean, are you, like, grabbing this guy by the... You know, someone by the arm, someone by the legs, and are you fucking him into the water with a splash or what are we doing oh, are we... how loud yeah. is it right how... now or are we like... or are we grabbing him by the ankles and trying to slowly lower him in? it depends <laughs> how, how high it... this precipice is uh, and how loud we... the entire place is i think it is like if we yeah, if, it's, if it's 15, like it's 15 feet it's 15 feet yeah okay so like i try i get down and suggest the pouches um uh, pu- push well, it push it over and I, i'll like catch it hmm um Question: Is it is it like weapon training going on in the yard? Yeah, like it's so it is loud. Of steel. Yeah. So yeah. do I do I think that someone would overhear a body hitting water over that? I don't. I would say give me <laughs> give me a wisdom check because this is kind of I'm trying to think whether you would see sort of intuitively whether it would be noticed or not. Can I can I give you an intelligence check instead? Like how loud I think this would be like calculating. Okay, it's this part of the well, water. Well, you can. I mean, you could. Yeah, I mean, you can give me an intelligence check to determine how loud it would be compared to the sounds that are going on in the yard. Yeah. Twenty-three. Then, nice, but then also give me a wisdom check because I want to see something. Yeah, it would be four. I mean, <laughs> it it might be. 
I mean, definitely the people who are sparring are not going to be able to hear it. Like, well, or it would just it would just blend because especially them, they're right up. Some of the people around them, the people, you know, practicing their archery would um, they probably wouldn't hear it. You, you, you know, you're pretty confident people in the yard wouldn't hear it. Okay, I'll, I'll go with Doral's suggestion and I'll kind of like tip him off and let Doral like, l I'll lower him down to Doral. Okay, I would say... Where are you? I'm confused because we all have two tokens. Yeah, sorry, I kind of moved the, the old tokens into the up, up, up into just a little box. I, I only kept them on the map just in case we needed them for like you know, something went weird with the vision and the dynamic lighting or something that we could go back to them. So his pouches um, down. Where's, where's pouches? Oh, there you're just outside the door there. Yeah. So, so at this point, um, yeah, you have dumped that guy. Um, I would say by that time, you know, Andy has finished turning the place over, and you. Have so. Some but baptized in puss in chat said, I also found three issues of orc love. Can I have found three issues of orc love? You mm. can, yeah, you can, of okay. course, you can. You I found, won't comment on how sticky they are. You've, yeah, you, you've, you found, <laughs> uh, yeah, you found four issues of Fayboy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Playboy magazine. I am gonna be so popular back at the barracks. Yeah, you also find one which is, I mean, for lack of, I mean, someone has sort of made like a, a homemade, you know, nudie mag. It's a very just a very crudely drawn, like you know, <laughs> just like someone is trying <laughs> to remember what. It Dwarven looks like. housewives <laughs> of. <laughs> <laughs> One homemade drawn nudie mag. Yeah. Okay. These are honestly getting added to my inventory. Yeah. They will come in useful somewhere. Yeah, you never know for bargaining or something. Thank you, yeah. baptized in puss. Yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> that is an amazing name. <laughs> yeah. 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 Miss, what was it? Baptized in puss. Ah. Uh, it's nice. It's a beautiful visual. In pus or pus? In pus. pus. Okay. <laughs> it what might else? be very fitting for the, the orc love <laughs> magazines. So, yes, you tuck your orc love and Fayboy boy magazines away and, and your crudely drawn homemade nudie zine. And, yeah, you've all, you have... A reconvening, I suppose, outside the barracks, or are you kind of taking all taking shelter inside or remaining outside? So, unless someone's so going to have seen and and challenge me, that money is dis or what I found is disappearing into my various pockets. Well, uh, well I, I, I definitely would have seen it, but I probably would have just ignored it though. Mm. Yeah, Question: How many bodies did we get rid of? Because we kind of jumped away from that before we finished that. Yeah, I would say. So you're you're dumping the ones like around here, right? Well, I'm gonna work my way through all of them. Yeah, I want to yeah. work through all of them. Get them in. Two, I mean, and then there's one far to the south. I shot. mean, I think realistically, you have got. I'll say, you know, you've got these two, the the captain, or whatever, and then this bigger dude. Because you know, I mean, in six minutes, it's good going to move two bodies. Especially because you had to get down, you know. You've done it before, then moving bodies. <laughs> I mean, not in not in not in six, not two in six minutes. <laughs> I have a fifteen foot movement speed, uh, like uh, on a huge encumbrance. Surely it should be quicker. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Once Sandy finishes searching these beds in this half of the room, before she goes down here to search the other beds. Um, she is going to peek out around the corner here, here, and sort of here as she tries to get past those gaps to, to try and get a head count roughly for where people are. Okay, also uh, just as well, um, just give me a stealth check while you're doing all that and then obviously give me a perception. Also, um, technically this pile of boxes 
um, uh, is a separate yeah. is separate from that section. So you could also search those boxes. Oh, okay. Though, She's definitely doing that when she gets there. Yeah. Though it, yeah, it's it's. It, don't worry, Doral. It won't take as long. It's more of a crack open the crates and have a look. You know. <laughs> Um, if if she's so, busy doing that still, then I would have gone down to try and drag this body up and into these plants yeah. here. I, I will say, by the time Andy's finished what she's doing, you could all those bodies on the left, like the, because there's still this dude still in the barracks, and there was a guy that you killed up here, although you did tuck his body away, you know, uh, behind uh, rocks and into shrubs, so he's good. I want the guy in the barracks in the and river, the and then the guy way to the south in the plants. Yeah. So, yeah, there's more than enough time to sort of clean up your mess, you know. Like, so, I'll, I'll leave Dural to, like, wait down the bodies in the river while I go and deal with the guy and just tuck him into the bushes. Okay, 27 how, how stealth. Much? Sorry, uh, T, sorry, what was it? No, no, it's okay. I'm thinking out loud. So, Thana's probably just kind of, like, talking to themselves. Sure. Um, I suppose Patree has probably seen Andy going through all this stuff, does Patree feel any way in particular about whether or not Andy's pocketing these things for herself? I don't think Patree actually cares so much because he's interested in a thing that he knows nobody else would really give a crap about. So I think because Watson's been in there with her, Patree is going to be kind of lurking behind, just seeing what he might mm -hmm. be leaving behind in terms of yeah. Actually, anything would you, yeah, would, would you? Yeah, would you give me... Um, Actually, how much of the courtyard? I don't know if people, uh, if people can see. I might. Um, if Andy and and what could what's give me a perception check, please. Yeah. What I'm going to do is, depending on what they see, I'm just going to briefly take everyone's token and kind of plop them in the middle, so you can kind of get like a grade out. Oh, cool. Should I do a perception on a uh, tree, or is that just Watson? Um, it's just if Watson is like following Andy around, mm -hmm. as Andy kind of peeks out, you know. So <laughs> Andy is very stealthy, but his kind of over, you know, I suppose second guesses herself and sort of peeks out, but just really quickly because it's like she's already peeked out and she's expecting somebody to just be like right there looking at her. So she's like, oh no, fuck this, <laughs> you know. But as she does, Watson, being much smaller, has flitted out and but i think look. what watson would would absolutely do being like patrice little guy is he would actually go and find something useful for andy and kind of point it out to her so she knows that he's uh that mm -hmm. we're fine with her sneaking and whatever definitely so in the course of all that yeah um watson had watson likes andy had, sorry i'm just gonna move watson out here so you can kind of get an idea oh wow i can see of the place <laughs> I, I i will do this for uh everybody Man, there's a lot of really scary looking things in there yeah. watson had boots he'd be shaking in them i think this is probably oh, puppies you guys look we can get a... i don't know if anyone can see Watson's excited. He wants puppies. Oh, yeah. And you can... So I'll just say Andy... No dogs. We got one already. That is true. And we aren't the best at remembering he's with us. Yeah, he. I have no. him up in, like, the top corner right now because that's where he stayed. But yeah, it's where somebody, we can, somebody can go get him, you know? No, it's probably best to keep him out of the way because if there's any dogs there, he's outnumbered. Yeah, I don't think I'd want to see him die. Mm -hmm. That's um, on the per per also, um, Watson, with that, um, with the 16, you can hear from... Um, oh, sorry. This is, sorry, guys, my roll 20 is being slow. Um, you can hear from this building. Um... You haven't haven't noticed, but you're pretty sure there are people in that building. Oh, okay. well, Is, that's uh, that's Watson noticing this. Yeah, yeah. He uh, so he he would, you know, report any of this back to you and to Andy yeah. and 
Once yeah, else he'll, he'll kind of make it clear to Andy that he hears something in there. And yeah. I think Patri will probably come around and, and scope yeah, it out and, once possible. Uh, chance to look So, out. Andy, um, yeah, the investigation check, as you're going through, it's like, it's all pretty... Oh, sorry, I realized... Sorry about that. I never pressed enter on the message with the, the loot. Sorry. Um, but this Wonderful is... Number. This is what you found in the crates. Like I said, it wasn't it wasn't hidden or anything. There is a bullseye lantern, two hooded lanterns, ten torches, and eight flasks of oil. So it's just like a big supply crate for you know the night watches and and everything else. Ooh, can I? Oh, I'd like to. Mm-hmm. I'd like to steal some of that. I mean, yeah, and I mean, um, well, you see Andy doing it, you can. Well, these these things um, in particular, I'll like secret them around my pack and my pockets and whatever. But these I will actually share out to the group when we get back together. Um, it's more the gold and, and gemstones that are going to have been not mentioned. So for um, everyone, just if you're not aware, just like as a brief overview, the hooded lantern is it works like a regular lantern where it does 30 feet of bright light and then dim light like a slightly better torch but you can i think it, whether it's an action or a bonus action i can't remember you can dampen it so that it just creates like five foot of dim light you know so it's good for like sneaking around you can have light but you hear something and you dampen it and then the bullseye is it creates a 60 foot cone of bright light so it's it's directional. It's, it's like a torch, like mm-hmm. a flashlight torch. Oh, nice. Yeah. And then there's oil for, you know, basic thing of a flask of oil lasts for an hour in the lantern. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm just thinking more of cocktails for mm, the people in the courtyard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I would say by that, you know, Andy's done some rummaging. The bodies have been discarded. The tree has been sitting back and letting you know let Watson sort of scout for him. You know, um, do I make it down to where I just moved past the? Is my stealth good enough to have made it down there without getting spotted by anyone in the courtyard? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Will I give you another so investigation like for down here? You can. We can say this is all part of that um, time frame. You no. Know. Yeah. What is this? Oh, oh, okay, D. Um, Y'all are always saying Andy's like stealing too much, but one of these days I'm going to find a really cool magical item uh, or something, and you're all going to be like, it all paid off. Oh, yeah, that, that's all in character. <laughs> Loot like fuck, please. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, you find it, it's not, um, you know, you find some. Where are they? Yeah, you, you, you find, basically, uh, this is all that you get from it. It's, it's either they don't have as much or they're better at hiding it. People in this barracks, but you get 172 silver pieces and 412 copper pieces in scattered amounts. You you know, similar thing, find a couple of cloaks. There's, you know, a nice, um, someone's got like a, quite a nice, you know, short sword. Um, polished up, and but other than that, it's just it's just bits and bobs and letters from someone's got a letter from home, but it looks really old. Like it doesn't look like a letter they received recently. It looks like a letter they have been keeping, um, and it says that their father has died, um, and that they would like to see them. You know, that they should stop their gallivanting and come home. Um, and someone else has like a little uh, it's like a little vial on a on a leather thong like necklace um it's empty but you open it and it smells vaguely of some kind of perfume uh Durl, Durl's outside and he's looking to the others here outside like what the fuck he's like, <laughs> we, we need to not get sucked into this we need to make, do a perimeter check this is like a kicking a goddamn nest of hornets <laughs> we need to be clever like at that point and be like well, which way do we go do we want to head towards the front and see that side or do we want to we we started down the south west 
Yeah. We should just do a loop the mm. whole way around. Well, yeah. no, no, we started at this bridge. We, we made it like a third of the way, like a third down one side, and that's it. Well, did, did we not start down here? We. I you, go- you did start in the southwest, and you had moved... You had started going clockwise, and yeah. then I think you moved back the way. I say we keep going uh, clockwise. Remember, we only came side. up. I'm talking about when yeah. we came up onto the land here. Mm. Remember, we went in the river up. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Climbed we, up, and you went, and now yeah. we've only done this little corner. Up we should. Here. Yeah, we should go back to the to the around. river and keep going around. That's what I think. We need to know I'll, what we're I'll, dealing with I'll inside there. The, I'll yeah. tell the rest of you guys that didn't that didn't hear from Watson that there's sounds in here. Maybe we could go around and be do a kind of what we had planned for pull, like lure them out. Just, do you know a message that? pouches? Do you know message? Maybe you could send them a message and get them to move their arse. Ooh. Let's see. I gotta re- remember what spells I actually know. What's the I know one where you get the copper wire right? You have twenty five words that come up. Uh, yeah, I message, do know yeah. message. It is message. Ah. Well, tell them something. You've got twenty five words, right? Um. Are we talking about these people in this building? The people up top who are looting, get them back down here to the river if you can. We'll oh, he's saying message, message the party. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Say. Um, so I've been just moving Andy. She came out sort of round the corner down here by this dead body. So, like, I'm just slowly moving her mm-hmm. that she's going to she's gonna circle back up to you, if that's okay. Um, sure, sure. Yeah, you're pretty... Right. So... so Watson would, just so you're aware, um, I will... Oh, you know, actually, sorry, let me put them onto the token layer because... um, uh, because um, Watson saw them. Uh, Oh, sorry. Sorry. Is it going to undo that for me? No. Oh, God damn it. Oh, my God. What the hell? I can see the middle section now. Is that what you were trying to do? No, it's fucking picking up. Sorry, this is gone all screwy. I'm going to mention to Duro and remind him, we still need to get rid of that body right at the top there that, that someone else killed for us. Yeah, I'll go I think we should move along the top. Yeah, I think we should yeah. move along the top to that corner and see what we see down that end. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll move this body, uh, send them a message, get them to get down here into the river, and we'll continue round clockwise. I'll try and I'll send a message to Andy and be like, where are you? You can respond to this message. Yeah, sorry, my I don't know why my speaking. My roll twenty's being laggy. Um, uh, roll twenty. Yeah. <laughs> I have I disappeared. Yeah, I've seen Andy's token sort of like moving around randomly. Um, the last I moved it, I was over here. Yeah, I saw it in the courtyard there a minute ago. For some reason. <laughs> Baptize and Puss also says Andy finds the latest CDs by Meth Leopard and System of a System of the Drow. Ah, uh, I... nice. Well, le- oh my god. <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna do these individually because yeah. So you have all reconvened. So you're going. Uh, you said you're moving clockwise around. Yeah, I'm going to step top moving clockwise as we go. I'm yeah. going to get back, okay? yeah, yeah. back to the bridge here and wait for everyone else to kind of move with us. I think Doral's going to probably stay in. I don't know if Doral's staying in the river yeah. or if he's going to join. I, I'm heading up here while those guys come out and attempting to hide this body. Um, and then, oh, well, yeah. we, did, we did hide that body already. He's like behind okay. this little low cliff. Like, okay. I kind of just pulled him over the cliff so no one could see him. Yeah, I remember trying to take them down silently in the beginning of the fight. Yeah, so so just to clap just for for um what Watson and reports, 
So in the Those courtyard. Are the his last Watson, I think. Where did he go? Uh, he was in the barracks. Hang on, let me. Like let me uh, the barracks went all black for me. I don't know if you got. Yeah, yeah. I got. Hang on. I got him. I got him. He got. Well, twenty layers. Oh, there we go. He got. He got. Um, put onto a different layer. So yeah, out in the courtyard. Yeah, in, out in the courtyard, basically, there's a total of you can see there's in the two little training areas. You've got like two guys sparring, one uh, you know guy with a big heavy weapon, and he's sparring with a guy, with a, a mace and a shield. And then there is a, a more lithe guy, like a, more, a rogue. He's fighting with a guy with a longsword. They are being um, spurred on. One of them by a, a woman with long hair and a very ornate-looking blade. Or the other crowd, there is a drow with a shield and a spear. There is this guy with like a um, a sort of purple leather cap and quite a large bow. He is training the people um, at the archery, uh, the archery range. Uh, then there is a rather tall um, half orc who is, uh, just sorry, an orc who is um, in conversation with a dwarven woman. It's got two axes, and then there is a total of four. Uh, dogs. I don't know. Did you see one of the dogs before? I think you might have. Mm -hmm. I can't remember. Um, but they are these sort of like war hounds, um, and they're all wearing leather armor. And then there is one dude parked in front of the entrance to the main building of the keep where the the bosses went in. Just as like so, that you've got a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11 soldiers and or brigands and four dogs in the courtyard right now. Um, when Andy gets back up to where her pouch is and I assume the others are starting to assemble, um, she is going to mm. sort of like show the cloaks that she found. Um, mm. Basically, if, if they're cloaks taken from the barracks, they might be slightly more uh, low-key than walking around with our brand cloaks on. So I don't know, does anyone want to switch cloaks? Um, I think Andy is going to. Andy's going to swap into one of the one of the cloaks she found. Sounds like a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. One one is a very. Um, hang on, let me just say, I would say, between the wall. Um, yeah, you you found three. So there is like a a very kind of a, a mossy muted green. <laughs> there is one which is a kind of a tan. It, it, it's like a sandy brown color, so it's it's different from your brown cloaks. Um, and then the other one looks like um, sort of a, a faded navy color. So there's kind of a a, a green, a, a blue, and a, and a tan. And are any of the eleven soldiers wearing cloaks of similar colors? Um, a lot of them. They so they they have something. Of a un of a of a uniform, you know, where it's a lot of dark leather, preferably black leather, with bits of red. Or like somebody might have like a red tabard, or all they might have is like some red cloth that they've ripped up and wrapped around, you know, one of their arms, or made a bandana or a neckerchief. Um, so they're a little bit ramshackle, and then the the cloaks are similarly just if they're wearing a cloak. Um, they're, they're similar tones, you know, it's what you would kind of see around, at, like navy's actually quite a popular colour, a sort of a muted green, there's tans, there's some black ones, you know, greys, it's kind of just all mismatched, none, none of the, the cloaks you're wearing would look out of place, um, whereas the brown cloaks probably would, probably would be a little bit more distinctive, um, you certainly want to cover up your badge, the pin on your cloak. I'll definitely take one of the cloaks and like wrap it over my current one. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there was there was uh, there's three cloaks. So depends on who's who's uh, grabbing them up. So Pages and Andy are in two of them. So who yeah. grabs the third one? I'm not very stealthy, so uh, I'll skip it. I'm more of a kick down the door and punch people kind of dude. Fair enough. Give the other one to Ember. <laughs> Um, I don't mind who I don't mind getting a cloak or not getting one. Sure. I'm fairly fine. Well, what what does Donna have as a cloak now? Because she doesn't have a brown cloak. That's 
No, I'd probably have my own kind of like dingy grey cloak, like my regular cloak. So I wouldn't look too dissimilar from the one yeah, no, we found yeah. here. Like, to be honest, your basic cloak. Thana's cloak probably looks the most like the ones that they're wearing because it's it's been in the swamp a lot longer, like these yeah. guys have, you know. So I'll, I'll give the third one and be like, give it to Petrie and be like, come on, let's get going. And yeah. I'll just try to like, not quietly, like sneaky, sneaky, but just trying to avoid attention. I'm going to walk over to this cover I know here. Um, there. Petrie, um, Petrie, no. could you just, just roll me a d20? A d what? Sorry? Nico, could you a D twenty? Just a just roll a D twenty. Six. Ooh, six. Mm-hmm. The cloak is a bit too big for you. It's not designed for a very. Sw- it was like it might have been a dwarf. Would have fit him dwarf, before. Like a dwarf's cloak, but it's like still it's like trailing along the ground. Um, I was like, I just I was I wanted to roll to see what are the odds that one of the cloaks would be Wait, small how, enough. How to tall Petrie. is Petrie? Well. Oh, how tall is Petrie? That's a good question. Well, how tall is the rest of the crew? Because I feel like this is all going to be dependent. Yeah, I, I feel like we were going on like, like, because mechanically, Petrie is a gnome. He he is an elf that was shrunken. But we were I, like, I was always imagining him kind of like goblin sized, but maybe I was. Oh, right. Yeah, no, me too. Like a big half. He's he's like, size he's size small. Size ah. small. I did not. I did not realize that I, in my not in my size. To me, as an elf. Yeah. No. I, I like, like, you really like the, a toy. He could, he could be the he could be the size of like a halfling. Which yeah, I think, I think the, the Carrie, Yeah, Carrick said to me on the Spelljammer charity stream I was doing last night, and I apparently it's true, but I refuse to believe it. The in D and D gnomes are taller than halflings. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This Wait, is true. No, that- yeah, no, it's true. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah check, yeah. check. It was yeah, like, yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's like halflings average like three feet. It's like that's in, that's ridiculous. Also, for that's the oh, most oh. absurd thing I've ever heard in this game. <laughs> of note, like uh, Dural is five foot eleven and would probably probably pass as a very buff small man. Like, mm-hmm. He is the absolute tallest a dwarf can be. <laughs> Dural is taller than me. <laughs> and me, by like quite five, a bit. I'm like five ten. <laughs> Yeah, so Andy, Andy and is about five and a half feet. Like she's mm. small and slight, <laughs> so um, she's probably about the same height as Daryl, or maybe even a little shorter than Daryl. Mm-hmm. What nice. about Pouches? I think Pouches is like over. He's probably the tallest, isn't he? Or... Pouches is muted. Pouches is like five eleven. Yeah, I, I couldn't and remember. Thana? Pouches was like tall and. Kind of okay, know. so Daryl's five foot ten now, just to make the small person jokes viable. <laughs> um, Thana would have would be in around five nine five ten because they are half high elf, so mm-hmm. they'd have a little I, bit of that. I do like the idea that the dwarf is the one of the tallest by like an inch. Yeah, and <laughs> yeah. But they still the they still call him a short ass because <laughs> I'm um, the tallest. I win. Yeah. I'd say Patrice is like about just under four feet, but like like gobbling me. So he just he seems really, really small, but you know, he's but not I think massive. part of it is Patrice is because his po- like his posture is like a little he's a little hunch. Well, exactly. over, yeah, yeah. So oh, so it, yeah, different. it's yeah, it makes him seem a bit a bit more diminutive. And he just so, didn't grow properly because you know yeah. all the kids. <laughs> mm. so, yeah. So could we your... fix it by just putting a belt around the cloak and like pulling it in a bit? Um. I could sure. Does someone things. have a belt or got like a rope? Get some of your rope or something. You're not having my belt. I'll just like cut a length of rope off and be like, "Here you go," and like hand it to the tree. I've got like twelve loops of rope in my bag or something like that from okay, the first I mean, if game. You, if you take if you take a bit of time. Can, can Watson just trail me around like a like a flower like girl a, holding like a, a brush? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. I, I notice there's some dirt on my belt, on my shiny belt, and uh, I like use mold earth to remove it, and shine it up. Nice. Well, nice. while this is going on, Panna's just kind of going to look around and say, "Oh, what exactly is the plan? Are we going to keep mm-hmm. looking, or are we?" Yeah, let, let's go around clockwise outside around the outside, try and see what we're dealing with. Maybe there's a better way to attack this. 
uh, it feels like if we just go in here and start a fight, we're going to we're gonna be in a hornet's nest and the whole oh, castle yeah. will be running at us. The best way would be to isolate as much as possible. Yeah, to so... just do again what we did before, f- find a group of them, l- manage to luckily take them out without raising suspicion, keep repeating what? that until we whittle them down. Mm-hmm. Before we do that again, we need to move up to the other end of this on the back and I point to the body that's like still slumped in the distance and be like, and hide that. Mm. Yeah. Well, we'll clean we'll up have, your messes before we kill more people. We'll have some time before the corpse starts to smell. So. Oh no, I'm more worried about someone walking around the corner and finding the guy slumped in the grass. Ah, yes, yes, mm. of mm. course. Thanos, <laughs> Thanos, going to like consider that they're so used to seeing dead bodies that they're like, mm. oh yeah, yeah, you don't just find yeah. corpses just. And then I also like the, the the thought that Thana is then also like, well. Yeah, and oh, that's a good point because if they come around the corner and they see a corpse, they'll squeal with delight at the surprise that they found. <laughs> like, oh, a gift for be... me? How could you? <laughs> oh, <moi. laughs> oh, you shouldn't have. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So you are moving. So I'm going to get a group stealth check. So everyone just roll stealth and then we'll see how. I'm assuming you're all kind of trying to move as a unit mm-hmm. are we gonna do the same thing where andy is up front for the stealthiness <laughs> and the, the survival uh i'm gonna use a bless Ooh. can i use a bless mm. on, on this um uh, i am gonna use my inspiration to rule an advantage <laughs> yeah i would say yeah you can use the bless because i mean technically you can't crit fail on a skill check so Does it's Durrell not like... need to roll because he's moving through the river? So I got 13 altogether. Is Doral not up? I can't see his token, is he not? He's gonna he's down in the river with he's like moving in under on the edge of the cliff below us. Are you in the water, Doral? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was trying to get everyone to come down in the water and we'll make a, a loop around and check everything. Oh, out. you want but... to Okay, so uh, well that that's that's a fair point just to consider that. So are people gonna take Doral's suggestion and move through the water or up top? I'm staying up top. Uh, up top would be my choice. Mm-hmm. Up top. I don't mind if people want to... <laughs> yeah, no, then I'll move up the, up to the top. Um, and just try my best to be stealthy. But yeah, because I've already okay. blown my okay, inspiration so on got... this stealth check and everything. 13, okay. 17, 19, 4, 18, yeah. oh, I need and to roll mine. you still need Patrice. Uh, I think. Oh, that was. Um, I just realised that was. Uh... And five. Okay, so Yikes. what's nine plus? Yeah, so yeah, so thirteen, seventeen, 17 19, 19, four, 18. eighteen, and five. So we're just kicking up dirt as we're walking along, humming. Is it? <laughs> yeah. Uh... Good. Me. I don't like that. <laughs> I'm scared, folks. So, yeah, you actually, all of you, as a group, you are moving around, um, and Andy's kind of leading the way, although, after finding all that stuff, stashed away and you kind of sneak past the the open building you know and you you kind of you catch a little glimpse um you know here and there of oh why does oh i oh i see those tokens are on object thing already you know you catch a glimpse of the people in the barracks and you can kind of see them through the thing andy's not really paying attention and she actually trips up um, on something, but uh, Doral, who was very on edge, you know, is this whole time the complete opposite, sort of like grabs the back of Andy's cloak and slowly kind of rocks her back onto her heels, you know? He actually uses mold earth to move oh. the earth to catch her falling through. Yeah, even better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the rest of you, you do make it as, as a group between the rest of you. Some of you are lagging and picking your way through. You know, Watson, um, Watson is fine. He's 
you know, bomb, bombing along and weaving between things. P Patree is like, you know, very much hitching up his cloak skirt and kind of, you know, trying not to get it muddy, but like not doing very well. But you, you make it without being detected, as far as you're aware. Um, you'll make it up to... Uh, I'm just gonna kind of just grab everyone's tokens roughly and sorry I'm trying to grab all of you without getting um, any of this stuff that's on the, the layers okay On roll twenty. Oh sweet Jesus! <laughs> Don't do this to me now. Sorry, it's it just been a little Huh? Yeah, hang on. Let me just I just press in the tower. Put you in the what? We're in the tower now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. I was like, was that a? No, no. I'm gonna move you out and just. Um, sorry, it just, I went to drag you across and then it lagged and so it wouldn't put you further up. Sorry, I'll just grab you, put you outside. So, so you've kind of, you make it, you know, up here, all of you, and you can see that body that was left. Where is uh, this one's up here. Yes, yeah, so you should all be, you're all out there now. You can see that body that has been left. I just ping this for folks at home yeah so um andy oh i suppose all of you actually could you give me a perception check please yeah oh, god sorry moving everyone once okay uh -huh. oh nice Yeah, so basically all of you except for Thana, who they are looking at that corpse up ahead, and <laughs> just thinking, thinking it's like can't sleep on Christmas Eve, you know. <laughs> like, um, they don't hear, but everyone else. So inside, um, and I'm gonna say you have like the basic idea of um, where they are. You can hear, so I'll just, I'm not sure, you probably can't see them right now, but when you go past, you will. So you can hear um, from this gap in the stone, you know, that just kind of opens up here. You can hear two, um, two, you can hear two of the fearless fellows uh, just chatting with each other, talking about drills, and one's like, oh, you know, fucking back. You know, my back is aching. So I want to. We've got to get out of this fly bitten hellhole. Sick of it. Shh, I, I, I whispered to the others. Yeah. Should, should I grab? Should I grab? I don't know what we're doing here. <sighs> and I was going to like be like, I said too. Uh, with my perception, can I tell like how far in they are if they're alone in the room? Um, yeah, you um, you can so you can hear these two, and then you can hear not terribly distinctly, but sort of further in the build. So, so basically, as we're looking at the map, you know, kind of like south southwest, you know, if you like, sort of to the you know, basically southwest of where they are. You can hear more activity and there are probably other people in the building, but they're not like in that room specifically. Okay. I get you. Um, but those two are in conversation. There's two of them. They are about, um, so from the, the threshold, you know, one of them is like very close, maybe, you know, five, 10 feet from threshold. The other one's a bit further, 15, 20 feet in, you know, they seem to be at like, opposite kind of you know sides of a room just kind of talking so they're to Durrell's, moving, so they're clearly stationed there to Daryl's suggestion of grabbing them I'll be like mm, and then I'll be like me 
go really fast, stabby stabby, um, you grabby grabby <laughs> kind of thing. Um, <laughs> yeah. Welcome back to Grabby and Stabby. <laughs> hey, kids. Uh, I'm going to suggest before that, I'm going to be like, how about I just create some, uh, like an odor of something cooking out here or like something that smells good and they'll, they might come out, out through the gap. <laughs> And we can, pouches then you can grab the, the, cookie, the cookie smell. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <Cool. laughs> Patches makes a really good man in a van. Yeah. Uh, totally. Um, Andy, Andy, Andy will move to, to hide behind the wall right beside the exit. Yeah, same. I'll, I'll move up with her and be like, ah, every mm-hmm. bird we speak might let them know we're here. I think grab and stabs quicker and andy um, has her two daggers out and she's like, like just hold on and i'll just like under my breath just quickly mutter the spell and i'm okay. just gonna create like the smell of like like uh roasted meat but like not freshly roasted but just like you know like maybe the guard outside is like snuck a sandwich or some like snuck a, a slice of beef mm-hmm. or something you know you're just getting this faint trace of like yeah food. and you're you're putting it like uh, presumably you know out like basically out past where you guys would be so that you so that they would walk like out yes. and follow through okay um this is awesome. sh- sure um, i'm just gonna like give the thumbs up to tree and thana behind us and like okay. good luck uh just let me see okay yeah these um these brigands are not terribly well fed out here because dude, they're like, oh, is that, you know, I'm sick of it here. I haven't had a decent boost. <laughs> Rickard, is it? Yeah. You smell that. And she's like, yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's like roast beef. So he's like, and he's like, mm, fucking Darren, sneaking his rations again, poxy bastard. And he's like, I'm gonna, he's like, I'm starving here on guard duty, sitting on his fat ass. And he starts, you know, the other one, um, so he's back and he starts moving out. Five. Yeah, I'm ready in action to grab all the the and... second one that comes out. Okay. I'm ready in action to shoot at. Um, once I see both of them, I want to fire. Do, 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 Ray of Frost. Yeah, I sort of look down and go, You go first, I'll go second. Okay, because yeah, Andy is also ready to stab. So could she get. She might get hit by the Ray of Frost, but that's that's what happens. Ooh, okay, so. Yeah, so this, this guy's has come out he hasn't spotted you so the first one has appeared and you're so who was so andy sorry, was, I was moving things. andy was gonna move up and stab him twice fast okay um so i get sneak attack because i assume because or is it advantage yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah no well, you i'd say advantage you'll have advantage because you were kid it's basically well, I mean, technically he's surprised, so basically, I think essentially... You, you have advantage to hit someone who can't see you. So, mm. yeah. uh, you have advantage on a surprise creature as well. Yeah, but oh, okay. now... Sneak attack, te- though, is when... Technically, I should have... Advantage of sneak attack, so... You yeah, no, attack. I'm just... I'm, I'm thinking there, I probably should have rolled initiative to determine surprise, because... Although this, you know what, this hasn't happened yet. So yeah, yeah go, go, yeah. step, step. Uh, once per turn, you can do that after you hit with an attack if you have advantage. Yes. Okay. Cool. So um, let me toggle on. Okay. So dagger followed by offhand dagger. Step, step. Uh, so seventeen and twenty-five. Uh, uh, um, so the first one seven is seventeen. Let me just double check. Um, seventeen. Uh, is a hit and actually so as that first one goes in um, you're remembering that these um, these brigands from the last one running minion rules on them so if 
most of these these fellas, if you hit them, they got out. Now it was a bit different. The big, like the heavies, the guys that had the heavy weapons and were a bit bulkier, they seemed to go down in more than one hit. But pretty much all the rest of them, this one, you come in and you, at least I think they do. Let me just double check this. Where is my? Um, where's that gone? Oops, okay, I think for some reason some of my notes have been deleted. Hmm. Yeah, doesn't matter. So, yeah, you come in and you jab this dagger through the chainmail into his ribs and you feel it puncture something and he does... Uh, oh, he lets out a... Scream... And then you can hear this person inside because they hear this, ah, and then they go, Rickard. And I feel like Andy I, would be a, be proficient enough not to like stab the guy where he screams and not to like stab him. Cover in him. Cover his mouth. Yeah. Sure, you want to cut you? You, you want to cover his mouth? Uh, I, I think I probably would have stabbed like one of her favorites is to stab at the throat so probably one, one to the true. ribcage and her offhand which I went ahead and rolled the damage because yes. like, she's, she's stabbing this guy yeah. twice even if I it's like overkill cut his so, throat throat and um, simultaneous pr- pretty much almost simultaneous throat and nice. um, up and through the ribcage so, so this guy uh, okay so he is going he goes limp and is about to fall just in a heap on the ground from user reaction to kind of you know yeah i think I'll, from just you know playing try, and, try and sort of guide him down using the two knives as sort of like levers yeah well if you yeah if you just yeah just don't let him drop straight down and so now you can hear do you want a strength strength check or something for that or can we take uh, it as red? No, yeah, I think you'll just take it as... Now, I'm going to say before now, we're going to roll a niche. So I suppose we've got two options, actually. Do you know what? I think... Yeah, you know, for the sake of ease, I have so many initiatives in here. I suppose you could probably... We can either re-roll our initiatives if you want or keep the initiatives in there, but I can, I can maneuver them around. But... We're going to enter initiative just as because the other one is walking out now. You know, that happened in like a, a split second. Yeah, so I, just... I have readied an action to grapple the second one. So we can mm-hmm. start off the combat with that, if that's okay. Yeah. So actually that will, yeah, because you yeah, forgot, yeah, you'd ready that. So realistically. I've also got a ready. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. There's, There's a bunch one. of readied actions. So do any of those trigger is the more appropriate question yeah so this one has come out here so the out of reach of grapple so what what are you ready pouches ray of frost okay give me ray of frost oh eight Bad times <laughs> solid <laughs> solid eight okay um will you um Dora, will you just give me a Dexterity check because yeah. I want to see yeah, if you can sense. if you can sense. lunge yeah. across to grab because they're not you know they didn't because this is kind of in the bushes. Oh yes, okay. So you do. I'm just gonna shift him over there. So you do manage to get into the space. Me. Um. So. Right, sorry. No, you're all good. So just give me the athletics there for the grapple. Sure. Um, ba, 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 ba. Athletics. Come on, baby. 22. Okay, I think this is going to be... Um, so, actually, let me check their acrobatics. Do they, I, don't, I don't think they have it. No, they got a 17, though, but that is not enough to escape the boulder. Man, that feat is so worth it. <laughs> <laughs> I got expertise in grappling from a feat. Oh! Mm-hmm. So yeah, I just uh, I I I pounce on him uh, probably like, <coughs> from the back and attempt to like choke and pull him to the ground. Um, yeah, I would say you could basically make 
um, make an unarmed strike, but we'll assume that it's non-lethal. You know, because like Doral's python, you know, wrapped around <laughs> your neck and like crushing your windpipe is gonna. Yeah, he t- he takes damage. like a full like he lifts both his legs off the ground, does a body triangle with his legs, and oh, also yeah. chopping yeah. them like this. Uh, let's see, so an unarmed attack. Where the hell are mm-hmm. you on my sheet? There it is. I feel like Doral needs to take the crush up. The crush I like up. the idea that you're like yeah, clinging was... onto him and punching his head. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, so go to it sleep. is. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is. Uh, it's good night, Vienna, for this. But <laughs> he, uh, but she, um, she is knocked. Out. I'm just going to try and get something that kind of looks like sleep. So they're actually just unconscious. I, so. Yeah, this uh, you bring this one down to the ground. You take it to the mat, and you uh, it just there's like a struggle. All the legs kick in. You know, you can see the dirt puffing into the air, but eventually you go limp. But you can still feel a pulse. There's still soft breath. He, and Doral just pulls he, he reali- them into the. He realizes that they're still alive, and if you'll allow this, I want to throw them off the edge and say drown. Oh fuck yeah. <laughs> totally. He's uh he's not going non lethal with these bastards. You <laughs> uh, Yeah. I'm gonna say actually give me a strength check. Sure, um, sure. I wanna see do we get them into the tree line. Okay. I know you you you'd you you you'd use a lot of energy to choke them out, but they're going to be out for, I mean, long enough to drown. So I'll I'll help Andy just to like get rid of the other two in the meantime while Doral's yeah. busy indulging yeah. in sadism. While while we're doing that though, um, it part of the disposal. I am going to like frisk the the corpses. Mm-hmm. That's a bit necrophiliac. I mean, I'm feeling so while bodies. while um, Andy goes about frisking the corpses and looks longingly over the side where Doral has just yeeted one of her fun bags. <laughs> one of her <laughs> lucky dip bags. <laughs> you know, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> um, we are going to take a break. Um, we will be back in uh, in 10 minutes, folks. So stay tuned cool. for more looting of corpses and <laughs> drowning of... I mean, they're... they're, they're shit bags they're bad people <laughs> you know they were strong arming refugees and murdering people let's not you know let's not have too much sympathy for them <laughs> okay uh we will see you soon folks we'll see you in 10 hey welcome back everyone um you were all spared a terrible joke which from me which made us five minutes late sorry <laughs> be thankful that you were spared um we are back here with the cloaks so two more um Two more of these brigands have been choked and shanked and drowned. Um, yeah. <laughs> and it's general havoc. Um, so yeah, you've um, you can. I would say you gave me. Um, so uh, who gave me pouches? Um, just based on like that happened very quickly. So just based on the previous perception check, there are basically. Um, I'm not sure if I ping here. I don't know if it's visible through the dynamic I can see that. or even the corner of it. So basically, like around this corner, it seems that there were um, two other people. But thankfully, it seemed like they weren't um, they weren't right there when the, when the other two left. You know, they they seem to have like maybe been switching um, shifts. So, but there are two people around that corner, um, and then you can hear quite a bit of noise coming from like this direction, you know, further in. But I'll have to go inside and uh, investigate. Okay. Well, Andy's going to make a beeline for the room with the beds. Um, I'm gonna need, yeah, probably renewed stealth checks for yeah, people. If girl tries start, to stop you, but it's they're gonna late. start. They're gonna start peeling off, and 
you know. Ooh, ten. Okay. Um. I'm gonna get a consequence, consequence, consequence. Uh, <laughs> I don't want no consequence, consequence. So, um, yeah. Speaking of consequences, so it, it was pretty, um, like, you know, you 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 sneak along. You know, you're not like. Yeah, I think Andy's getting a bit cocky with this, you know, with the stealthiness. Um, so you're moving through. You know, and then you kind of kick a stone, and you can hear from around that corner someone, two people in conversation. There's um, um, you hear a, a man's voice, and he's it's you know, seems like yeah, you know, but you remember, don't you, when we were over in Devika, that you know they were saying this, and they wouldn't stop talking. They were running their mouth at the bar, running their mouth, and you know me, I'm sitting there, and then the there's a, a woman's voice. She says, shush, 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 wait, 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 wait. Shut up, shut up. And the other guy's still talking. He's like, Cheers. Rickard. Mel. Need it. And, she, and then it just goes silent, and you hear. Do we hear this outside? Is it loud enough that we hear them calling? Yeah, yeah, they're like calling like two people's names. She's calling two people's names, and then Andy, you just hear a. Oh no! Yeah, Andy's readying um, a bow, her bow at this. I think she's probably like. And I am going to pulling it, putting roll, her arrow. Uh, yeah, I think. <laughs> Roll initiative. I'm gonna give just one. You can all have um, like one action or bonus action or you know reaction over before initiative is rolled because Andy is there and the, these because these two are moving like one has drawn the sword and then they just they just have to come around a corner and they're gonna see Andy. Which which direction are they coming from? Like this um, way or this way? They are coming from th- this way. Ah, okay. Let me what just. Else? I'll move into this space. Just. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll move into this space here so mm-hmm. I can get a good shot as they come around the corner. And I'm how, hold. how far away from us are they? Um, you're not entirely <clears throat> sure. Um, but. Um, so I'm gonna. Yeah. So everyone, you can you can take one action. Um, the, I'd say you could either take an action, or you can. Or you can move half your movement speed. One or the other before. Well, I mean, we'll roll initiative, but we can assume that this happened, you know, for um, initiative. So, uh, for my first action, I'm just going to cast bless on the three who would be ahead of me. So that looks like Doral, yeah. Pouches, and Andy. Where's my? Uh, okay. Oh, there it is. Okay. When someone's prone, what does that mm-hmm. mean? When someone falls prone? They're like, um, I mean, they're, you know, either crouched or flat on the ground or, um, and then mechanically, it means that if you, you have advantage on a melee attack against them, if you're within five feet, but like ranged attacks have disadvantage on them because they're kind of, you know, flat to the ground or, you know, and it, it costs them half of their movement speed to stand up. Okay. So it wouldn't, it's not advantageous to do that to the enemy if most of our party has ranged attacks. Oh, I mean, I if, somebody thinking, can, if somebody can get in close, I'd be happy with that. Okay. Yeah, I, I was thinking of, I of steep, could, I, people. could I ready grease? And I, I want to put grease on the floor when they come around the corner. Yes, um, like when you, when you, yeah, for when you see them, sure. Yeah, so as soon as I see their sort of shadow peeking off, I'll I'll cast grease at their feet, get them all ready for uh, for mm. Dural, Dural to come pummel them. It is this. Um, where's this dude? Sorry, looking for my uh, 
This is okay. Well, yeah, that guy who was yammering is his initiative is one, but the um, the uh, big lady with the sword is um, fifteen. So uh, do we so you could yeah take you like you could take those actions or move that bit and then you just roll initiative. Um, so. Because uh, I like, has one of them appeared in one of them has kind of appeared in my sightline at this point? Um, you haven't, you haven't. I mean, I guess if you create, yeah, I mean, if you craned your neck, you might, yeah, you'd be, you'd be able to see sort of like see her shoulder. You know, she's, I mean, a good, she's a good 6'3, um, looks very broad, um, um is pulling out this great sword. <laughs> Because they're coming looking to see if there's trouble, do I get advantage on this as a surprise or is it just a straight roll? It'll be a straight roll. She, she is, I mean, you, you, the, her com- she's alerted her comrade that there's someone there, but um, no, she's not surprised that she got a nat 20 on her perception. Okay, so cool. So she knows I'm just... there's someone in there that's not who's supposed to be on duty. That was a 20 to hit with the crossbow. As, as she came into view. Oh, I assume, yeah. So I would say realistically, she's she's a smaller target, so I'm just going to give her half cover. But it was a, a 20, right? So yes. even an 18 would hit, and I'm pretty sure she it would be 16 AC, I think. Um, yep. So that's a hit. Or five piercing. Okay. Five piercing. Yeah, so this... Um, yeah, and in this instance, yeah, you know, you she's pulling the thing out, and actually, it's as she draws the, you know, sort of props thing and draws this sword out, you get a shot, and it because you get more of a target, and this bolt just sticks into and pokes out from her bicep, and you feel she's ah, you know, lets out a a, a, a grimacing grunt. Um, yeah, she does not like that. So. Um, ba- 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 that was my ready action. Who do we Used. have? Okay, so is anyone else doing anything in particular before their proper turn? Did they move action? already? Huh? Did they move already? No, no, this is just happening like before. So we all get some prep actions and then we're in the initiative order. So for mm-hmm. my prep yeah. action, I am going to summon uh, a rock hand. Um, sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That is my bonus. I'm gonna move half my movement. Five, ten, fifteen, and I'm gonna get behind this curtain. Okay. Yeah, you'll get a bit. Um, where is the grid going? Hang on. So, yeah, you'd have to. Uh, I suppose yeah, you could get. So they're gonna be. I just wanna like duck behind the edge of this curtain to just get some, like oh you can't really see me where I, where I am at this point. Yeah, I think you'd have. To... Oh sorry, move the X. You'd have to get into either that space or this one. Yeah, I mean I think if yeah get into that space and you can, you'd have a little bit of cover. Uh well I mean when I was in this one. What was it? No, this so one. You were, you were in bet- okay. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, it was, they, it was, I, I have no line of sight on them, which I'm assuming means I have no. They have no line of sight on me. Yeah, but you'd either have to move into one of the because at the in that one in the middle, you're in in between spaces on uh-huh. the grid. Is it not um, locking to grid? Um, it is when I move you, but I don't know if it's. Uh, yeah, it's locking to. It's it's showing locking to corner as well. Maybe it's allowing it's... me to lock onto the intersection as well. Uh, maybe it's uh, okay. Okay, so who has? Can I move okay. onto the space with the curtain? It's not allowing me because it's the wall. But in essence, could I move onto that? Um, sure, sure. Can you just put me on it? I yeah. I can't move onto it myself because it's the wall. Sweet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so. Who hasn't? Uh, pouches, Thana, um, Pouches, 
Uh, do, 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 just pouches and, and Thana, would you just roll an initiative and I'll, I'll move everyone into just in preparation, yeah. I'll move everyone. Mm-hmm. Fuck. Okay, Sorry. but that's still better. Come on. Okay, so where's everybody? Oh, god damn it, it's being so slow. So, okay, I'm gonna to to move the pouches very slowly up the ranks. Okay, so 12 thunders, I think. Who is. Oh, I regret everything about this initiative order. <laughs> <laughs> this is painful. Forgive me, folks. <laughs> this is this. What did I say? It was like when I when we started out. It was like um. God, what did I say? It was it was like fifty tokens or something in the mm-hmm. on the map. So they just put them all into the initiative order. It was supposed. Believe it or not, this is saving time. <laughs> <laughs> Where, where, were we supposed to blunder in and have an all-out mini attack with all of them and not sneak around? No, no, it's, <laughs> no, it's just it's just because there's so many of them. I was like, instead of rolling them all individually, and there's like, you know, I pre-rolled all their initiative and just put them in so that we could do this. But uh, I think uh, um, I think up first is is going to be um, Andy anyway. So Andy, you can. Take you might want to just jump to the top again. Just skip a yeah, few turns. I, I know. I'm just I'm just putting everyone in, and then so <coughs> you can, you'll have you'll have your turn anyway. I'm just gonna really quickly reload my roll twenty. Just give me a second while it loads. Mm-hmm. Oh, there are we go. Think, uh, yeah. Are you thinking movie stabby or stay shooty? Um. <laughs> She's inclined to kind of like the 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 the, the quick switch to, the, to her crossbow was just because they were going to be a distance away, um, so she wanted to yeah. get a quick one in. Um, now it's going to be run and stab, I think. Um, okay. Just for the for the attempt to keep things hopefully up close and quieter. Um, so sorry, I'm just getting it reloaded now. Um, Hold it. There, slowly but surely. There we go. Okay, so where am I? I'm over here. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. That puts me in range of this one, right? Yep. Uh, and 30 is my speed. So yeah, um, stab, stab on this one. So dagger followed by a dagger. Hey, so it's a nat, nat 20 on my main dagger. Oh, yeah. For 20. Um, so that... Does that double the damage or something? It, it's done it already. Oh, has Soon it? Oh. Rolled yep. twice. oh, yeah, it has, yeah. You rolled a one and a four. Oh, okay, so perfect. It, yeah. Nice. Uh, my my alt hand dagger do, is a seventeen to hit. Yeah, I would say the with, like with the nat the nat twenty. Andy just comes in and like skids across the ground and basically like kind of hops a little bit off their knee because they're much taller. So they had buckled a little bit, grabbing their bicep, and their knee was a bit bent. So Andy runs and like bounces, like hops with their foot off of. Um, her knee to just like jump in and slash up across her neck and then curve around and jab it <laughs> the knife into her ear <laughs> and then she goes down like a ton of bricks um, she is awesome. dead but uh, I would say you can the second attack um, the the guy there next to her is chain mail and a shield so it just you kind of go swing back but it just misses the 18 AC. Score. Um, that is Andy's turn. 
turn, I'm pretty sure. Give me one second. Uh, yeah, because I I bonus actioned the offhand. So uh, that is Andy. Andy, you don't forget oh, you do have a bless. Um, oh, uh, yeah, I could use the oh. bless on, on the second one to make, uh, hopefully, to make an 18 on that. Thank yeah. you for reminding me. Uh, so, yeah, that's now, uh, that was now a 17 plus 4, 21 to hit on the offhand. That is a hit. Watch, wow. love the bless. For four damage. Nice. Um, yeah, that is the knife sinks in, you know, right up under that guy's chin and uh, you'll see it pierce through his tongue come out of you and then there's just a little dribble Ooh. sorry of, i love that uh, sorry it's squelching <laughs> yeah but uh so they're down but the the noise that you when you when you won with the bigger brigand she let out a scream you can hear from you know kind of all around you can hear um, people rummaging and rustling and moving. So, you know, you hear people sort of saying, you know, oh, this way I heard, you know, I heard something. There was commotion. And particularly, you hear from the room kind of behind you, uh, you hear, oh, sorry. Oh, God damn it. Where is it gone? Um, uh, come on. Sorry. Why is this being... You hear chairs scraping as... Um, yeah, you can hear these chairs scraping um, and <laughs> people standing up from a table and calling out and glancing over your shoulder you see a room full of the <laughs> leaders who came in and you see that woman you, this woman looked big the six foot you know six uh, foot four but this uh, she is at least seven foot tall built like a brick shit house wearing like animal furs her teeth are unnaturally <laughs> sharp like they look like fangs and she has like this tangled mane of mottled hair that kind of you know like um you might see it on a wolf or something, you know, that kind mm -hmm. of like, yeah, where it's it's kind of, yeah, mottled color on the fur, you know. She seems Merle. like almost Merle. kind of something canine about her, you know. In D&D &D terms, it'd be something like the the shifters, you know. She's not like full on like werewolf. She kind of, like I think I said before, she basically looks like female Sabretooth from the X-Men. X-Men, <laughs> yes, I remember basically, that. Basically, yeah, yep. this is, yes, this is Sabretooth. <laughs> And uh, she sees you, and she looks so happy. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Can she I use sees a... blood for And she's like, <sighs> and it's just fangs. And yeah. Uh, can I have, can I use a free action just to, to kind of say to Ember, like, run and hide? Because Ember's in my pocket. So Ember needs to jump out and run, run and hide somewhere. Ember? Ember jumps out, but um, Ember like jumps out and sort of ducks in just behind those barrels next to you, but is like staying kind of peeked out and is staring into that room. Um, okay. As who is up next? Um, oh, it's actually this dude. So uh, coming out of here, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Um, 30, uh, this guy's actually gonna, five, 10, he moves here, he, cause he, he had to use his action to, to dash, but he's just dashes to get up in between you. That is, he's got, uh, like a little war hammer and a shield and, you know, he's just saying surrender. Uh, that is him. Who is... I'm gonna say they and he doesn't heard. listen to people. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm actually trying to come up with what she'd say in response, and I'm I'm drawing a blank. Huh. I think yeah. two words. Oh, no, one of them a swear word. Yeah, basically, yeah. I think she's like get fucked. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. Oh. Oh, thank you, Die Reason. I got it. I got a bless. 
Okay, they are gone. Who's this? I'm just checking to see. A, a chaos, bless. chaos bless. Chaos bless. Chaos well, bless. Let's be honest. Now. Going in here, we all knew it was Andy that was going to get us caught. Yeah. Yeah. Tree. Tree's okay. Up. Well, so they they didn't come around the corner like I had thought they would. So I will come in. Can't see these things suck. All right. <laughs> Watson is following me as per usual. Yeah, I'm gonna get this dude. Mm-hmm. Another trigger. Okay. Where did my thing go? Mm-hmm. Roll twenty really, really yeah. does not like. Oh, my, so. Mine is is is. Yeah, my roll twenty is like half frozen. Oh, I'm nuts. Um, okay, I'm testing. And select wounds. Um, can we check? Am I here? Can I reach? Shit. Um, did I move my max? Ooh, where was I? One, two, three, four. I think I can get one person. Um, I'm gonna cast. Depends. That's a hit. Uh, oh, do I have to click it again and roll it? That's odd. Mm-hmm. Uh, what level? I mean, yeah, it's, it's, level one. It's, yeah, it's definitely gonna. It's gonna be enough to uh, to kill these uh, these grunts. So, like, you, you do your thing where you uh, you come in and you pull the alchemy kit, and as you're running, you're like, get a little black tablet and you kind of slam it down into a into a vial and it starts to like foam and get sticky and then you like you pour it out onto your hand and it kind of makes this like gelatinous little black pancake and then Patrice just runs up and just bounces up and slaps this on the guy's cheek and then it like starts spreading and like melting his face inward <laughs> the symbiote he's like ah smoke's coming up bubbles you see like a bubble under his skin blow and pop and uh, he goes down. Well, and this was down. just a, one of the grunts? Yeah. But Petri is going to curse himself then because he came in all heroic like. And... Hey, well, I mean, can they were... a scary looking woman? Uh, you she... can now, yeah. Now that you've killed the guy, it's like, okay, who's next? And it's like, whoa. Sorry, is, you, is this her? That is, that is her. Yeah, and you can see around the table there were. The others, there's that weird, uh, creepy looking jester with um, the sort of theater mask looking thing. Uh, there is a um, a bald, very ashen looking woman in what looks almost sort of like war priest garbs. And then there is a very, a very studious um, elven woman with, um, she doesn't actually have white hair like in that token, she's got jet black hair. She's got a pair of spectacles on, and she's like holding like a kind of like holding a spell book and a quill, and is sort of looking at, at you all with a raised eyebrow. And at the head of the table is the leader with the the scarred throat and uh, wild look in his eyes. I think the tree will uh, take a bow. <laughs> he doesn't actually. I should have gone for a different token actually because he doesn't. Hang on, I'm going to swap his token out because. He doesn't have a big beard like that because he likes to show off his uh, show off his scar on his neck. So who is? I'm trying to find where this next person is on the map. Where'd you go? If you have a over there the initiative order, it'll highlight them in a the yellow block. That's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm I'm zoomed out and I'm looking to see. Um, so these go okay. So I think they're good. That person's not around. Next is Thana. Awesome. So I'm going to cast Bane on on Sabretooth, uh, Scarred Neck. Hey, up, are you not concentrating on Bless? Well, how long has it been since I cast Bless? Like a few seconds. Okay, then never mind on that. Like turn, yeah. I'm going to move around right, uh, yeah. and just kind of get into a position 
so I can react when I can. Sure. And that's what I'm going to do this time. I'm just going to take in who's going to be joining in, who's not. Mm-hmm. Okay, Doral, you can hear all this commotion. You heard the shout. You know, you've all heard that. And this guy says, surrender. And then Patri scurrying in and you hear a splat and a horrific scream. So Patri's doing his thing. Okay. Um, I move <laughs> 5, 10, 15... <laughs> And where is it exactly? Could you ping it for me that the the leaders are? Is it in this room? It is in that room, yeah. Okay. Um, 20, 25 to there. 5, 10, 15. And uh, as I come to a stop, I do a bit of kata and uh, wave my hands about and stomp on the floor. And two stalagmites come out of the floor. I... I uh, smash both of them apart and shout, uh, All right, you beardless, hanky waving rock runts. I'm sick of hiding. Bring on the brawl. And I'm going to use my bonus action to make nice. myself resistant to uh, bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing. And I'm going to take mm-hmm. the dodge action as my action. Nice. So that is one, but not anywhere near. Two. Okay, so this guy. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 50, 60. You can see there's a, um, a woman running in here with a battle axe. Um, doo, doo, doo. This one is it's fine, they're outside. The dogs haven't noticed yet. Okay. Nobody. Uh, is this person? Nope. I actually need to get rid of them. Okay. Dog. That's fine. Nope. Who's next? Not him. Stop. Okay. This guy is going to move. Five. 15, 20, 25. Okay. So more people are just kind of closing in. Okay, nope. Just want to see move all these people into position. There's some people that are still kind of cloaked that you can't see. Okay. Nope. Nope. Yeah, it's lots of these dudes. Okay, I think they're all okay. Sorry, I'm maneuvering a lot of people around this map. I like it. <laughs> I feel like something's out there and moving. And it's coming. 20, 20, 25, <sighs> okay. They're gonna get to okay, I need to zoom in. So they're gonna get to they're gonna get to that square. They can they can get to there. Who can they see? I suppose they can see Doral. Um, yeah, they can only see Doral, so but they've got a lot of cover. There is a sniper, like an archer, in the doorway to the southwest. They go for a shot. But that's an eight. So I think even with their bonuses, um that's a miss. So Doral, you do that. One of the an arrow comes and the top of one of these stalactites kind of, you know bursts open and spray of clay um uh, but it does miss you then this dude how just Durl just laughs a little manically <laughs> yeah pouches showtime wow that, that actually was quicker than i expected <laughs> um, yeah a, a lot of them are still like way out in the courtyard and stuff that's like they're not five, gonna immediately hear this 10 15, 20, 25. Oh, bollocks. Mm-hmm. 30. Okay. This guy with the bandana on his face, what what is the cost on him? Um, this, uh, this person. 
Yes, yeah, him. Um, so yeah, she, she, she is the um, like war priest looking one. I just put castles okay. on all of the like those the bosses. Okay, cool. I was just wondering if something I need to take note of. No, yeah, it was just for like uh, even if you know you zoomed out a little bit, they've got like a little thing on them. Does this guy who's just come into the room from the side does he look like a grunt or a heavy? Um, just like a regular a, a grunt. The um, the the heavies kind of have like the. And then if you can see, they've got like a white kind of on the token. They've got like a white fur cloth thing. Um, but he's just uh, no, he's one of the he's uh, or she rather, I think said had a, a just a battle axe. I'm gonna go with scorching ray. Three shots on the war priest person. Um, he, yeah, go for it. Uh, you're um with okay. I'm gonna give them just half cover because the people allies in front and a bit of, uh no 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 you know what I'll, I'll just go straight roll yeah cool. go for it <laughs> okay I, I might have think... actually considered changing my mind if you'd given them a half cover I wouldn't have yeah uh, so I just wanted to confirm it's three okay and I mean unless you're up casting it but... uh, at third level Second level spell slot don't have enough cost at this stage. Oh, of course it's second level. Yeah. Twenty one plus blessed. Mm -hmm. So I'm only gonna roll the blesses if you tell me to at this point. Mm -hmm. Oh, actually, uh, you you all still have the bless on until you took a short rest, wasn't it? With the the pixie you had blessed you. Oh, yeah. I just remember that. Yeah. <laughs> Can okay. bless a stack? Mm -hmm. Nine plus bless. Um, they can. Um, and oh, also, Patrice has inspiration because Nico beat me in chess the last session because we played chess what? when people can show up. Um, both of those so hit, yeah. Well, uh, the nine, I'm guessing, doesn't hit. The but nine does not hit. They've got too. 20. They, she, uh, they are wearing um, plate armor and they've got a shield. Uh, so that's 15. Even with if I were to place myself again, that wouldn't go. Um, <coughs> no, not the, not the nine, no. But that's, yeah. So that's you said that's two. That's you. Four. Oh, no, six, rather, sorry. No, no, that was just my blesses. Seven oh, fire damage. Oh, sorry, for sorry, the first, I see. Yep. And six fire damage for the second. So 13 fire damage to her in total. 13? Yeah. Yeah, so you fire off these against just the, the rays go scorching. One kind of sparks off um, against the wall. It just hits the corner of the, you know, what was once a doorway. And uh, the other two go screaming uh, forward and they just hit them in the chest and the fire licks up their face. But um, yeah, they just, uh, they kind of... Uh, they let out a this weird sort of you know that go? almost ec <laughs> ecstatic sound, and they uh, yeah they they Please do that again. They... <laughs> <laughs> never again, never Please again. Do it again. Clip it. <laughs> and I'm gonna be like, and I'm just gonna like look at Andy who's standing next to me and be like, I knew you would get us caught. <laughs> and like, but I give her like the biggest shit eating grin ever. Like I'm not angry at it. I'm just like I knew it would be you. This and so thank you. I'm fault. so so tired of sneaking around. Is what she so, gets out of this. Mm, uh, the they um they they look across the the hall and uh, they they don't have the mm. veil in in this just the closest token. Um, and they look at you and they they say uh, we said we can fight fire with fire and then they bring up they've got this um like a flail with three sort of spiked heads and then they start like they start spinning it and it catches catches on fire and this this pure white flame just sort of erupts over it and then sparks out um and actually that means it is uh, 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 this guy Okay. Come on. Uh, 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 uh. 
Do, 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 do. Um, 5, 10, 20, um, 30, 35. Just this guy uses his dash action to get up to Andy and Patree and ready himself. Okay. And then I think we are. Okay, he's gone. So we'll be back at the top of the order. But what I'm just going to do is. Um, uh, where are they? Okay, so. Uh -uh. Bear with me one second. need to make a note of this. Um, so, we go through here, bang, 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 all good, not going through any of these people. Um, we're back to Andy. Um, so if, if Andy wants to, so she, she daggered the last guy, is it okay for me to pull a different weapon at this stage? Or do I, is that an action? Um, to like Switch a weapons. ranged weapon, uh, or... Or yeah, no, to, be... to pull the, the short sword she found. Um, if you if you just if you want to just drop one of the daggers to the ground and pull it out, but it would it would be an action to sh like sheath the dagger away and unsheath the sword. But if you just drop the dagger, just kind of toss it and uh, she has a spare dagger, so I'm okay with dropping the dagger. So just on a short sword, can she still is that a one handed or a two handed? It's one handed, yeah. One handed. It's okay, so she is gonna bring uh, um the sorry uh, uh, just move that over a little bit so I can see. Um so the one who moved into range just in front of me, did they end their turn in that range in space? They, they did. did. So but I, I, I won't. Oh have, yeah, do I, you wanna I, do I, your No, I, I just think she'll have since they didn't attack, she'll have stayed there and she's just going to immediately short sword them. Um, do I do I get sneak attack because Patrice is also Patrice, in range? Is, yeah, Patrice is within five feet of them, so... Okay, so short sword. Let me try this out. That's an 18 to hit. Yeah, that'll spawn. Um, cool. So that's nine damage altogether. Yeah, so um, drawing that short sword... You, you know, they, they, they put the shield up, you kind of faint with the dagger, and then they, they put their shield up, but then you just spin the sword around and you hook it and just catch under their chain mail and just cut straight across and you feel their stomach cut open and they slump back with their entrails coming out. Okay. Um, and then, so I usually use my dagger as a stab offhand, but I can also throw daggers. So the dag the other dagger I was holding, I'm going to throw. Oh, nice. Um, but I have dagger thrown as in as an action. So we have to, it'll be, it'll give 1d4 plus 4 damage, but we just have to minus off the plus 4. Cool. Um, so I'm going to throw it at this guy over. Ah. Yeah. This guy yeah. here. Um, so that's a 24 to hit. Yeah, and then just straight whiz through the air, just offhand, and it just goes through his eye socket and um, yeah. falls back. Um, or she, rather, with the battle axe. Yeah, so the minions are dropping like flies. Um, um, so as I, as I like, so um, the dagger I dropped, am I going to have to use an action to pick it back up? You can do it as like a free action on your next turn to just... Yeah, so basically in between this and my next turn, I'm going to have picked up my I would dagger. assume at the very beginning of your next turn, you'll pick up. Mm. Yeah, cool. Now that's, um, that is, that is Andy's turn. She'll stay that where is, she is. 
Yeah, that is Andy. So the, the it's got a like, nice big, little barricade of bodies for me. Yeah, yeah, the uh, the big boss, uh, who you were told was Belloc the Deathless. He is. Mm. He he didn't stand up. He he only now he stands up from his chair, and he's sort of sitting in the second, and he's like, you think you see him, Andy? You think he's reaching for his sheath, but he just reaches down to the table and picks up his his cup with water or wine. You're not sure, and he just takes he takes a sip and gives a sort of an interested look, and kind of leans against the wall, <laughs> <laughs> and that's what he does with his turn. Uh, who is that? He is not there. So this guy is dead. So I'm going to take him off. Uh, 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 they're not there. Bang, bang. Going gone. So it's going to be Patree. All right. So I actually was not in line of sight to them, but I'm going to stab. Uh, Actually, so I'm gonna do Tasha's caustic brew through Watson along that this line uh, here. That's the best spot to put him. Well, he can. Yeah, that he can occupy. Guess? Yeah, he can occupy space. Somehow. Okay, so that'll get those three in that line, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so Does... I will. Sorry? Does Watson have to, and I'm trying to remember now, does Watson have to get up? He doesn't have to get up to them to do the spell, does he? No, no, no. It's, um, he channels the ranged spells for mm-hmm. me. And, and I realize I forgot to make him go last turn. That's okay. But she was being an idiot. Um, I cast this. Um, yes. Yeah, so these, oh. is it a save for me? Dex, it's okay. uh, Dex. So I'm assuming it's um. And yeah, so then I cast easy, it, easy, and then three? Watson takes his uh, reaction to to use it. it. So is it? It's these three. Yes. Okay. Okay. So let me just make sure I know who I'm doing. So. Okay. Um, can I re-roll? Is it worth re-rolling that one? Do I have something that lets me do that? Or anything I can use to help out here? Yeah, I you have, have a bless. Inspiration and a bless. Yeah, because I'm, I'm still concentrating on bless. So it has been a minute, oh, has it? Um, no, no um, she's talking about the rolling damage. Oh, sorry. Okay, cool. So, um, the studious... Oh, I'm on the wrong thing. The um, studious woman has succeeded um 10 plus oh 10 plus. so the jester rolled a 10 but he succeeded with 17 and what does pelt have she has plus six but she failed with a plus six she still only got a 10 so she's going to take uh is it a, a, a full damage half damage thing or is it um mm. Mm. No. A creature covered in the acid takes mm. 2d4 damage at the start of each of its turns. Uh, okay. yeah, Must so succeed in a dex throw or be covered in acid for the spell's duration. So I, I think it's just one or the other. Yeah. You either get hit with it or you don't, is my okay, understanding. But, um, Pelt, the name of the, uh, the um, saber tooth. Uh, so Sabretooth is covered in um, in acidic goop of this thing. Patree, um, again, he sort of, you see him, you know, mixing something, you know, vials in his little quick alchemy kit, something comes out of a little compartment there. Uh, but as he's mixing it, it's like disappearing immediately. And you see it like filling up in Watson as if it was being mixed in Watson. And then he <laughs> tilts forward and boom, pops his cap and this kind of foamy acid comes spewing out and smacks Pell. And actually, she's so built and like broad that it just kind of splashes over her and they're kind of protected, you know, behind behind her. Um, but yeah, it splashes onto her face and it starts seeping into her skin and you can see it smoking off the 
the pelt uh, of the. Is that? I love that. Is that the tree? <laughs> is he? Is he? Is he going to move on on before he like Watson did all that? Is the tree like moving or anything? Uh, uh oh, where does the tree want to go? No, I think the tree will stay where he is. But Watson also has his turn, mm-hmm. uh, so he'll do a force strike. That's thirty foot range on whoever's looking the hurt. You know what? He'll do the fir- the guy in the front. This guy. Mm-hmm. That should uh, hit. Um, yep. The AC okay. 17. And for three. Okay. Take that. Uh, nice. So, <laughs> yeah, it's it just like hits in the eye. And like, uh, And then I think the tree will flutter. Out. <laughs> and then he'll flutter back over behind me in safety out of their line of. Sure. Right there. Um, Thana. Oh, no, sorry, before Thana. Um, but, um, so, oh, what is she going to do? So, this woman here looks to. Oh, God, my goddamn thing is being so laggy. Uh, what is she going to do? Um, um, hmm. Yeah, okay. Um, Patree, will you give me a... I think it was Constitution? Um, she moves to... to uh, can she see? 5, 10, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Um, 25, 30. She moves there. Um, will you give me a DC 15 Constitution saving throw, please? Fifteen. Is she taking okay. a legendary action? Hmm? If not, no, she's... it's just her. It's her turn. No, I just, I didn't. Okay. I have their initiative, but I, I, they weren't added to the tracker because okay, cool. this exactly. So I just, that's I was I just confused was. for a sec. Yeah, no, because I almost forgot it because I was like, this is there. Okay, so just uh, so you only take half, um, and will you? Uh, okay, bu- 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 that's fine. Okay, will you give me a second one, please? Another same thing, DC fifteen Constitution save. Seven. Okay. Oh no, sorry, sorry. She can only do that once. Sorry. Um. So that ah. was twenty-one. So you take uh, ten points of necrotic damage. Um. And she just sort of flicks the book, and she puts her finger out, and you can actually see these like little spores all around her hand in the glittering side and she sort of just points a finger at you and then points and curls it back almost like she's pulling something from you and you feel your life force like sort of being pulled and your flesh sort of withering like it's almost wants to rot and collapse in on itself but you uh, you resist and you know she's looking at you rather curiously you know like Sort of running her eyes over you, over your, over your body. Patrice is quite a unique specimen, and she she pulls and she sort of gives a little look and then pushes her glasses up her nose, um, and then just stands back observing you. Um, and it is going to be Thana. So Thana's going to see how far the other kind of got away, and try and like sneak in try as much as they can without kind of getting any attention focused on them. Mm -hmm. And that's all I'm going to do. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, I think... I mean, give me a stealth check just to see if 
I don't want to see if you're going to completely... It's going to be very low DC because people are pretty focused on mm -hmm. what else is going on. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but even even with that, you know, you're pretty pretty confident. No one's paying attention right now. Mm -hmm. Um, and then so after Thana is the sisters. Okay, yeah. So uh, uh, since pouches, yeah, right, I guess so. Yeah, how far can she get? Five. 10, 15, 20, 25. Um, no, she doesn't want to block Pelt's way. So she will move a little bit and she is going to throw. Um, how many have we got? Uh, pouches, pouches and, and Andy because. The sisters, they've noted that Blackberry seems interested in Patree, so they're going to leave Patree alone. So Andy and Pouches, will you... Oh, no, sorry, am I making... Oh, no, I'm making a roll. Are you... No, you give me a DC 15 wisdom save, please. It's not one of my talents, Ben. <laughs> it's just not. <laughs> Actually, it is one of my, my ones that I have a... You so will get proficiency the, added. I got you will five. Get the, you will get the the bless, right? The saving throw. Mm -hmm. But um, so that's yeah, it's going to be still. So in total, I got thirteen. Oh, that was a very good bless roll. Actually, but well, this is fifteen. You know what? Mm -hmm. Just because I can, I'm going to add one of my own blesses to it. Oh yeah, go for it. <laughs> and I Just. get to 15 exactly. Nice. <laughs> nice. So what is this? 11. So what did I say? 11 plus. Um, so Andy, okay. So you're taking half. So Andy, you take uh, seven points of radiant damage. And you do not burst into flames. Uh, and pouches. And I assume I can see the attacker, so I think I can use Uncanny Dodge to have that again. You can. Uh, um, not have it again, you don't take. Uncanny Dodge is oh, if you pop Yeah, yeah, it. yeah, yeah, you just... Mm. So, you're off. Score. Uncanny Dodge. Oh, no, no, that's... Um, evasion lets you, if it's a deck save. Uncanny, okay, let save. me just... Do, 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 do I have does it on 20? Um... I was reading it on D and D Beyond. Let me see if I have. Just while you're figuring out pouches, you you it'd be the same. You'll take um, seven fifty. He rolled fifteen again. Oh no, not plus four nineteen. So nine radiant damage, but you do not burst uh, into flame as they just they you know you can see them sort of raise a clenched fist behind the shield and this bright white holy fire just licks up your body from. Your toes to the top of your head and it burns across your skin it's the hottest thing you've ever felt it's just white hot um light yeah uncanny dodge is just to have the damage i would take okay but you'll still what did i it was so i was seven. Ten, i was seven so, so you'll, you'll only take three no yeah three three cool okay so the sisters went after Thana. So, Doral, you're up. Um. Okay. Choices. Choices. Uh. Yeah. I um. I'm gonna move five feet to here. Uh, to be in sort of the doorway and try and occupy it and yep. say, uh, "Listen here, you team of roasters." Did I not tell you to bring the fight? And uh, I take the dodge action. Nice. And that's my turn. Well, then Pelt is going to have disadvantage um, on attacking it. Now, I just need to make sure. Do they have... Oh. So, okay. 
Bite. Bite, claw, claw. So... This is going to be... Bite, the claw. So, the bite is a, definitely a miss. Uh, okay, one claw hits, and the second claw is a crit. So, on disadvantage? Oh no, no, disadvantage, disadvantage. What the fuck am I doing? I just, I literally just realized as I said it. So, yeah. thank fuck. Um, yeah, that's bang bang. So, okay, there's an 18 and a 15 plus. Um, yeah, it's uh, 25. 15, 10. yeah, that hits. Yeah, yeah. They got plus seven. So, actually, that's. Actually, fucking thank fuck for the dodge because crit on the claw would have been 4d6. Or um, so okay, 2d6. Um, that is 12 slashing damage, no, um, 14 slashing damage halved to seven and 12 half to six, so a total of. Uh, 11 slashing damage, right? You you have the thing on, don't you? Yeah, yeah, I have rage on. So what's the total damage, sorry? Um, the first 11. one was 7. Yeah, and 7 then... and 6. So okay. No, 13. Is that 13? I can't fucking think. That's 13 damage, sorry. Um, 13, right. So yeah, one more. Cool. Um, yeah, so, so I'm going to blow my reaction to use bloody but I'm bowed and uh, gain some temporary hit points and get some grit points back. Yeah, so... This one, you know, you like you're dodging, and then she just ugh, lunges in to like just bite. At, she literally just goes to bite your throat out, but you duck and weave. And but then as you're like, it's so like fucking because they look, you know, mostly like humanoid, and it's it's quite like fucking unexpected. So as you're on the back foot, they claw, claw, and they just rake across your chest. You really feel it; it goes deep into the meat. And cuts you feel these claws like long fingernails scrape your breastbone. You feel it like that kind of nail on a chalkboard sensation you hell. But then, you know, you <sighs> Doral comes up and spits out blood, and then Pelt, she's just looming over you. And she, weirdly, she puts a like puts her hand on your shoulder and like uh, like puts forehead to forehead. And she's like, Oh, it's been a while. And yeah, I'd, I'd just scream back at her. Ah! Yeah, and she does, yeah, she just gives like it's like a it's like a roar, this animal sound comes out of her, and you can smell like you're expecting bad breath. But it smells like like a wild animal. It smells like raw meat. Like it smells like, you know, like yeah, like a bear, you know, just like breathed in your face. Um, so that was Doral and uh, Pelt. By Morden's beard, your goddamn breath is howling. <laughs> howling is right. Um, pouches. Okay, I'm gonna move to here, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna grin at that cleric. Just gonna make sure I just want to check the range on the spell before I cast it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool, it's twenty feet from one to the other. So I am going to be like, that, that's quite a trick, but have you seen this one? And I'm going to drop Shatter in the middle of that room, which will get the three by the door, the Deathless dude, and I think the Jester who I can just see the edge of. Yeah, yeah, well it's so like a, makes... it's a, it's a radius, isn't it? Like a 20 foot. 10 feet radius. Oh, 10 foot, sorry. Um, yeah, so if it's there, 10, 10. Um, yeah, you basically, I'd say, like, if you drop it, you know, at a I'm point, it, like, in the middle of the table, in essence. Yeah, you'll get all of them. So, DC 15 con save, 
A 12 thunder, half on a, uh, half on a success. Okay. So. Um. Okay. Oh, actually, also, the um, pelt took the acid damage um, the, from the caustic brew as it was melting into a uh, so fail for pelt. Um, so I think it's going to be a fail for. Oh, actually, hang on. Let me see what's. Let me double check pelt. Um, so, uh, what did you say? Fifteen. No. So she just missed that. She would have got it. Uh, so fail. 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 Uh, success. Uh, so, okay. Yeah, so the this shatter goes off and basically everybody but the the leader, everybody but the boss, you know, at the far end, they all take the full brunt of it. Are any of them looking like really rough yet or are they still looking A okay? Um what is the Oh sorry, I see the damage there, sorry. 12. Um, oh. Yeah. Uh, 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 um, no, they look pretty like it, it booms inside the room. You see cups, plates, you know, plates shatter into like a million pieces and bits of metal get buckled and twisted. Wood splinters, the chairs just explode. Um, and then the dust settles and they look a bit beat up. Some of them have cuts and, and bruises, but they look pretty ready to go, and then the the uh, boss seems barely touched by it. I mean, it's six thunder damage, but they they're looking still pretty good to go. But it did bang them up a bit, considering the whole room just fucking exploded. <laughs> oh, that's my turn. Nice. Um, the art of pouches is pouches, dum dum. Okay. Uh, um, mm, will oh, so I haven't been paying attention. Has any of them thought of as, as, acid gone yet? Because they um, get acid at the pelt. Yeah, she got. She took uh, acid damage at the start of her turn. She, did? she hasn't yes. hasn't bothered to scrape it off. So. Dum dum dum, the gesture, just jumps up onto the table, and then um, Pouch is next to you, and then Andy and Patrie. Those three dead bodies. He pulls out a little, a little puppet marionette, you know, the little cross, and then oh, no. he's, he's, he's just like uh -uh. he just goes. Ah, ah, ah. Huh. And he, you know, oh no, oh no, sorry, forgive me. He's mute. Sorry. He pulls them up, and then you just see these corpses raise up like puppets. And then, and then the I one turns, this. one that turns to you, pouches. It, it's turn its back. Its head just rotates, so its back is facing you, but its head just rotates, and its jaw like unhinges like a dumb. And he's just like, ah, oh, what's the big idea? <laughs> Question: Did the table actually survive that? It's splintered in, like it's it's like cracked down the middle and it's kind of buckled okay. in. So he's just like I was just curious for, for he bounds fanatic. up and yeah. That's all he does. He just pulls them up and then, you know, and then the other one it like looks at you, Andy, and like takes his helmet off and like a bit of his brain and his scalp comes out with it and he's like, How do you do, ma'am? <laughs> it's just really weird. <laughs> it's just like these yeah. corpses just animate. Andy's reaction is just like blink. Blink, blink. Hmm. What? Yeah. Um, and then Patrie, you see one, and it it comes up, and the other one's like, "What? Well, you know, what's your big idea? How do you do, ma'am?" And then this one, it like it opens its mouth, and then in just the most haunted, pained voice you've ever heard, just as with, "Help me, please, help me!" And and then he just starts laughing. And that's what he that's what Dum Dum did with his turn. Uh, yeah. and that brings us 
back around to Andy. Um, so. It's, not, it's just standing there, just like. Yeah, so which guy was the one who raised the zombies? The jester on the on the table. So he's standing on the table there. Mm-hmm. Uh, would I have line of sight on him? Yeah. Um, well, uh, well, he's probably these... have half cover because Pelt's quite big. Even though he's up on the table, he's he's a halfling, and so he'd he'd have some cover from Pelt. So. Okay. Um. Okay, so if I disengage, I go five, ten. Is if I disengage from the first one, but I have to go round them and pass them again, essentially, do they get an opportunity attack on me then? No. no, disengage works just for the turn. You can't. Yeah, it works for the turn. Um, you just can't get 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. That wouldn't give me. So if I if I had managed to get to say there, there is, do I have a better line of sight on him then? Or is he still kind of going to be half cover? Sorry, I'm today. assuming you moved down a bit. Also. Yeah, sorry. Um, I'd say you'd have a... Yeah, it, it's tricky because Pelt's quite wide and, you know, the, the sisters have their, their shield up. Um, I'd say I'll give him, like, plus one to the AC rather than the full plus two. Yeah, I think so. Um, I'll disengage from the zombies and, and get around them. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that was five, ten. That was, say, 15 movement probably to get around them. Um, and then I'm going to... Um, so, hang on. I I dropped the dagger, but I picked up the dagger, but I threw a dagger. So let me just move that back down to mm-hmm. three. I've now got... Oh, I've I have a lot of daggers. I've apparently been picking daggers up like yeah, we, they're going we out have. of style. <laughs> um, which kind of goes in, in keeping with Andy in fairness. Um she liked her daggers. So I'm going to throw a dagger at him and then throw another dagger at him. Um so again uh dagger did thrown. It, did you because did you bonus action disengage? Oh I already bonus actioned yet, you're right. So yeah. that's a so that's- that's when okay. he were to hit, mm-hmm. oh, um, so for five piercing, if we ignore the sneak, yeah. So this, got, you know, it just like you, you see it, it flings and it like it hasn't hit anything vital because he would be dead if he did. But you throw it, and actually, before you go up, you're like disengaging, getting ready to like, you know, go under them. But the two, the two zombies like oh, move, and the other one that was like its scalp and its helmet in its hand is like oh sorry you know like it gets out of your way and kind of does like an after you you know <laughs> gesture um and then you go and fling the dagger and it like sticks into his neck and he like jerks back but it's very unsettling he doesn't make a sound he doesn't even make a grunt when the knife goes into his neck it's just like And he kind of does this, does a little tear motion on his mask. Um, hey. um, but he's still standing. Is, he's still standing. He, he, like you can see blood, like blood, like spurts out of his neck, and he's, you know. Okay, so Andy's going to use the rest of her movement to go five, because she just t- looked at the big ones and went, nope. So five, mm-hmm. ten. 15 to get to there. Mm-hmm. And that's Andy's turn. Okay, so as Andy... So... Andy is... Um, as you move around the corner, you hear as you're moving... Because it is his turn now. Belloc the Deathless sort of pushes himself off the wall and just gives like... A, he kind of... There's a lot of commotion, but he like... <laughs> picks up a, a, a knife and he like starts banging it off his goblet and he puts it down and he's slamming and he starts walking up through his men and and you know he's like enough 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 he says, enough 
Stand down, stand down, all of you. And he, he sort of, they start parting and he comes up to all of you. He's like, oh, yeah. you know, I'm impressed. You've, uh, clearly you have made it through our defenses. Right here where, where uh, we were having tea. <laughs> he says, I, I, um, I must ask, uh, I don't know, this very rude of you. I must ask uh, who our uninvited guests are. I suppose Doral is in front of it, like, is, you know, there. And uh, as he's saying this, you can hear, like, all of you all around, like, to spin a couple of rounds. You can hear more people, footsteps on the stone in the distance. You know, like, people coming into the, the keep. But he's, I suppose he directs it at you, Doral. Is... Oh, I, uh, I just say to him, uh, listen, shut your head, you lavy headed walloper. I am going to light you up like a Christmas tree. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> I love them. I love the dwarves. I love them. And uh, he says, he turns to, um... oh shit, I actually don't remember. Are they. Hang on, let me. I don't remember other dwar- the sisters, dwarves. I think they are. So he turns to the the, the sisters. As he called them, says, "See, he says, he's like, see, sisters, you, yeah, you were all. Uh, you could take a lesson for you. Should be more like your, uh, your fellow here. You know, he's much cheerier. He says, he's like, they are a bit, uh, a bit dour." You know, is look. Uh, you know, I, I I was enjoying, I was enjoying a drink. It has been a long, long journey for me. We have just gotten back. So, what do you say we sit here and we discuss this like civilized people? What are you here for? Ah. Oh. I think you have picked the wrong castle to loot. I'll We're not here to head. loot. I wouldn't buy your head, you fucking roaster. And I throw a, a stone at him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like you do the like Eldritch Blast, you like yeah, just throw yeah, a rock at him. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah go for it. <laughs> um, let's see. 24 to hit for 5 force damage. Nice. That is a hit. That gets through. He's, he's got this like spiked. Armor on four, five force. Four. Yeah. So it, yeah, it goes out and it it does it like catches him across the jaw. He's like, <sighs> no, no, I <laughs> says I uh I have uh this is like if you you don't mind I uh I can uh, and he I have a. A trick of my own off my sleeve. And he fires. Um, so that is a 12. Okay. That is an 18 and 19 plus 9 to hit. Um, so I think two of those go through. Your AC is what, 15? AC is 15. Okay. Oh no, sorry, wrong die, wrong damage dice. Okay, so two of these, um, he holds up his hand and it just gets, for a second, engulfed in this black flame. And he fires it off. And three bolts come out. You manage to, at the last second, you kick up a bit of dirt and it just blows it apart into clumps of clay. And then the other two hit you square in the chest and Doral takes 45 points of necrotic damage. Oh! <laughs> I'm not resistant to that. I am unconscious. And then he shouts out, 
to the rest of you. Yes. I would suggest that you surrender. Could we just call a parlay instead? One of you is reasonable. And he's looking at, he, he sort of stands over Doral and he, you know, he kind of, he, he lifts him, he gets, he says to Pelt to lift, Pelt lifts Doral up and he, she like sits him in one of the broken chairs. And he says, I tell you what, he says, uh, you tell me why you're here. Let's talk about this. Um, Andy, when she shouted that out, is going to have been slowly moving this way. She's still got two daggers in her hands, but she's kind of like holding them up in the air. Sort of like, hey, I'm not going to just like in a second throw these two daggers at you. Um, and she's going to come around the door. They're in this room, right? Yeah. Probably eyeing this yeah, guy there's... really carefully as she does. Um, I know it's kind yeah. of out of turn order, but I think yeah, they're sense. all they're all sort of closing in, you know, like the people out in the courtyard have started to come in. Says so. What brings you to our humble abode? Out for a stroll, were you? You're not wearing the. Oh, kind of... Doral, Doral was wearing his brown cloak, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Yes, he was. Mm hmm. He says, I think I know why you're here. Yeah. He says, Yes, you are uh, yeah, the, the long arm of the law. Something has like that. has come to take me in. Is this. Uh, am I correct? So you mm. want me. I see your uh, your superior officers have sent you out here uh, in over your heads. Although I must admit, to get here you are far more capable than any of the brown cloaks I have ever encountered. We're not your usual set. I can see. So they sent you here to what? Uh, run us out of town? Something like that. I'll be Something. honest. I'm not even sure why we're here. I tell you what, this is... I am an honorable man. This is not a fair fight. Look, he says, I have... I have soldiers to spare. Mm -hmm. There are only five of you. So, why don't we make it a fair fight and make a deal? As I said, I am an honorable man. And I haven't had a good bet in a while. So I tell you what, the five of you against me out there in the courtyard. It's a bit of sport for my men. If you can kill me, then I give you my word. And he looks to all well, his, his, uh, his lieutenant and believe me, they will honor my word. If you can kill me, we will leave. Um, and he puts his hand out. I'll step will... forward. And as I do, can I just eye him up and down? Like, I just want to get yeah. a, a sense of like how strong I think he is. Go, give me an insight check. Like, I want to know anything like religious symbols, magic, spell casting, anything mm -hmm. I can kind of get. Give me an insight check and give me, I suppose, an intelligence check just to cover um, like history and religion. Yeah, sorry, Nico. Insight was natural one. Intelligence was nine. Uh, I was, I, I was going to say, can Andy distract him slightly while that's happening? But I don't think it needs a distraction. So no. inside total was six and intelligence total is 17. Intelligence total 17. Yeah. You're not familiar with the specific symbols, but I mean, seeing the kind of spell casting he slung at, um, at Doral and 
you know, he's got these strange arcane symbols. You can see his sword is without a doubt a magical sword. He's got this very long um, great sword. It's very long, thin, like a I think like a flamberge, like the sort of wavy flame bladed um, like very thin great sword. Um, it's got obsidian in the handle. Uh, like as you saw before, you saw it from a distance, but up close now, I mean, this this dude has, whether it's from gallows or, you know, like a someone tried to hang him and it went wrong or somebody, you know, cut his throat and it, you know, he, you know, like it thing all the way through. He has a pretty nasty scar across, right across his neck that you can see his, his long hair is falling over the back of it. Um... I mean, he looks pretty tough, but five against one, you know, mm. he fought that lich Bef and nobody before, died. Before we make this pact, Andy from her corner is kind of coming over and she just kind of, um, she while her hands are up, she kind of shakes the one that has the bracelet on it or the, the band on it. And, she, you know, this guy's obviously got mm -hmm. some magic going on. Reckon you could get this off? He has a look and he kind of approaches you and he's about to says, may I? Sort of. Somewhat, somewhat nervously, not like dropping her dagger in. She kind of just holds her wrist a bit, a bit closer. Yeah, he kind of, it's not gentle or he just kind of takes her hand and he spins it around. He says, hmm. Well, I may know somebody. He says, look, That's if you are nervous, he says, he, he looks at um, the woman with the spectacles, he says, Blackberry, he says, you're our quartermaster. He says, if you are nervous, he says, I'm a man of my word. I am, I am a mercenary. It is an ugly business, but it is a business. So, of course, we will have a contract. I'll kind of step forward at this point and be like, you know what? You seem reasonable. As a as to make it fair, will you give us the night to rest? Especially since you've done a number on him. And I look down at like Doral, who's yeah. He <laughs> says, "Oh like yes," and he says, "Oh yes, of course." I'm sorry. And he looks at um, uh, the the bald um, woman standing there, moves over and um, like puts her hand on Doral's head. And Doral, you, uh, <laughs> Doral. Um, comes back to life as, uh, as i'm brought alive i reactively just summon rock in front of me twice like i'm dodging the rest of the bullets this guy's through yeah yeah <laughs> and he's, he's like whoa, whoa, whoa take, ah! it easy, take it easy my friend you take it easy my friend we're negotiating <sighs> he says <sighs> so says has just I out of interest has one minute passed since i've turned I on would, that yeah 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 i am exhausted it. then yeah. I, I am literally he, exhausted Belloc turns to the rest of you, says, look, he says, yes. He says, I tell you what, he says, you can have the night. You know, we will give you the night to rest, but you must decide now. We will drop the contract. And he looks at all of you, he says, so. And if I say I'll... no, then we brawl it out right here. As we are, that would not be the best decision. He looks I, I, more just he... like I'm asking it just to see how he reacts to that. And Andy's going to pipe up. I'm interested in a change of profession. Says, like I'm not kind of like doing it in like a harsh like. Mm -hmm. I'm more kind of. It, it's a curious tone, not a, not a, not a like let's fight tone. He says, well. Oh. Well, well, if you don't want to, then, well, I will have to escort you out. Alive? And of course, you're my guests. Until we step forth is... outside of. That is rather fair of you. I, I, I say kind of like a little bit like surprised and I kind of look at him up and down a little bit. You know what? 
you have a deal, and I'll offer my hand. He says, well, I cannot make a deal with just one of you. So he he's going to look to the five of you, and he says, so. And as you can see, the like, quartermaster is like writing a contract. He says, so. Do you walk away? He says, or huh. trial by combat. And we're going to end it there. <laughs> and we'll give you some time to think. Sorry, we ran over. We started a little bit later. Oh, Should man. Have meant, to, meant to change Chet. the music, actually. Chet says, sus, I don't trust this dude. <laughs> Clearly, Chet has opinions on this. He's so trustworthy. <laughs> you don't trust Belloc the Deathless? Mm. Um, I mean, yeah. So, um, yes, uh, I uh, that that was um, all. We- well, yeah, yeah. I think um, Tendai made a fair a fair point that obviously this isn't going to be like you know you just you can read the contract you know. Mm-hmm. Before, before you decide, we we can decide, you know, in, in chat or whatever. But um, uh, yeah, that 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 was sort of always the 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 end game that Belloc would uh, would challenge you to, uh, rather than you fighting, you know, fifty people and <laughs> like all his lieutenants who were all, you know, CR such and such. <laughs> um, CR match. Yeah, I mean, I think I can't remember. I. I worked it out. Um, I can't remember because there is a kind of, there. I think they're at like eight. They're roughly equivalent, I think, to like eight level PCs. I think. Um, I work it out, but uh, yeah. Sorry, um, everyone watching uh, at home. I don't know if we've uh, gone. Uh, if we're still on, I meant to <laughs> check. But uh, yeah, thanks everyone for watching. Um, when we come back in two weeks. Uh, the party will have their decision and we get they can either um, run away and leave the the bad guys to their own devices or they can uh, fight the boss in trial by combat and if they win then he says they will abandon the castle and they will fuck off (laughs) away from (laughs) Winehelm I have some I have some questions on contract clauses they seem entirely hinged. <laughs> this guy does. <doesn't> <laughs> well, hang on. Sorry, before we leave, everybody. And this is a sweetener for Andy. So, think of it this way: um, if they leave and they pack up, they might forget some of their stuff, you know, all throughout the castle. Um, <laughs> anyway, folks, uh, we will see you next time. Uh, So thanks for tuning in and have a good night, morning, afternoon, wherever you are. See ya. Is everyone? Thank you.